Oh, oh, it did something. It did it. Oh, it did it. It did it. Okay, bye. <laughs> It worked. Yay. Okay. Because it was not letting me go. And kicking. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I've never gone live on TikTok before. I probably should take my headphones off because I'm hearing myself talk before. I probably should take my headphones off because I'm hearing myself talk. Oh, hi. Hey, it worked. It worked. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're going to do the live cake class that I said we were going to do at 7 p.m. It is now 7.12, but that's only because TikTok didn't want to show me any type of love. Um, so, yeah. So, I figured I would go ahead and call out what I have. Hey, Christine. Yes, it worked. Thank you, Jesus. Um, invite other hosts and go live together. No, it's cool. I'll just go live myself. Um... So I'll call out all the stuff that I have. You guys can actually click the link in my bio. And um, there's a link there that I've listed all the stuff that I'm going to be using tonight. Just in case anybody has any questions or anything like that and wants to know what I'm using and, you know, wants to remember. Also, uh, before I get started, I actually have a YouTube channel. You can go and watch all my videos. I actually also have a mentorship that I coach several women, and that's called HBIC Squad. If you go to hbicsquad.com, you'll get all that information too, and you'll see a bunch of the classes that I taught on cake decorating. I don't do cakes anymore, but I still do cakes for fun, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So let me go ahead. So I have all of this buttercream. I'm not going to need all of it, but I got all this buttercream that I just made. Let me tell you something about this beauty filter. <laughs> Listen, amazing. I have a turntable. I have a six inch cake round and another one and then an eight inch. And you guys can see I taped the six inch to the eight inch. If you're new to cake decorating, welcome. Hello. If you don't know who I am, I've never seen me go live before on anything this is my first time on tiktok but i used to go live on youtube a lot uh haven't in about six or seven months and i go live a lot on instagram too so you can find me by just putting in jelena simpson on instagram i have four six inch cakes four six inch cakes because we're gonna frost the cake tonight so for all of you who are interested in doing cake decorating or anybody who just wants to like decorate a cake for fun I'm gonna show you some bare basics that you could do so I've baked some cakes in a pan and you see how sometimes when you bake a cake you get that little hump right there right so I'm gonna use a serrated knife also known as a bread knife and I'm just gonna go along the pan and I'm gonna cut that little hump off also note that my pan is nice and chilled for anyone joining right now, hi, I'm Jelena. Hello. I'm gonna show you some cake decorating tips, some basic shit. All right, so this, oh, let me make sure I wash my mouth because I'm pretty sure there's some kids on here and the way TikTok be acting. All righty. Once I get all the tops off, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of the pan And what I'm gonna use is, you can use a butter knife, but I have this offset spatula. These are called offset spatulas. The reason why they're offset spatulas is because you can see it's offset, it's not straight line, okay? And I'm just gonna go around the edge with my offset spatula. Make sure I get the cake detached from the pan, flip it upside down, see? And then on the bottom here, this is parchment paper. Look how clean that is. Voila. I haven't baked a cake probably in about, mm, in about eight months. No, probably in about a year. I haven't baked a cake. 
I'm going to set this off to the side. What do you do with the tops? So you can do several things. One, you can eat them. Two, you could trash them if you want to. Three, you can save them from scraps and make cake pops. So when you crumble it up, you can make cake pops. I personally, um, I'm not gonna eat them and I don't, I'm not, I don't make cake pops, so they just going in the trash. Another tip on when you bake your cakes, I know everybody's used to spraying their pans, especially if like you're an amateur baker and you just bake from home for fun, you spray your pans or you may butter your pans and put flour in here. Nothing's wrong with those, but when you're looking to get clean, sharp buttercream on your cake and you want your cakes to be just about all the same size of your pan and all of them matching, if you notice, all of them go right up to the edge of the pan right when you spray them and you put butter in there that shrinks your cake and then now your six inch cake is probably under six inches and a little bit wonky on the sides right and then it'll dip in and kind of look more like a pyramid and less like a round cake so you want to not spray your pants not spray your pants at all i do not spray my pants I line it with parchment paper. See the parchment paper? I put a piece of parchment paper down there. I put my batter in there. I bake it off. Once it's baked, I chill it in the pan. And then I've taken it out, which you just see. I just took these out of the freezer. Take it out and I bake these at two o'clock this afternoon. You take it out and then you release it the same way I'm releasing it. And you notice the sides are round and they all stay nice and round and even, right? That's what you want in your cakes. You do not want to spray your pans and it's just gonna shrink your cake. And then you're gonna have a six inch cake, you're gonna have a five inch cake, hell, you may even have a four inch cake. I used to spray my pans all the time and it would shrink my cakes. It would shrink my cakes and I would have to, oh, I cut some off. And I would have to use more buttercream to make up for that shrinkage This is the last one. So on the tool and supply list that I recommended for everybody to um, get their stuff ready if they wanted to follow along with me, I said three to four six inch cakes. I have four. So, and I have some bobo straws. If you don't know what bobo straws are, these are bobo straws. They're basically milkshake straws. You can find them if you live in Georgia you can find them in Kroger's. If you don't, you can find them on Amazon. You can just look up milkshake straws or you can look up bobo straws. And um, they also are in a lot of Asian community uh, marketplaces. They have the bobo straws because they have the boba tea. So that's why they're called bobo straws. I'm a clean as you go type of person. I make a mess. I need to clean it up right after. Can't work in chaos. Okay got my turntable and another thing maybe you want to invest in silicone mats it helps so that way nothing is shifting around if you don't want to get silicone mats you can actually go to the dollar store I don't think I have any actually yeah I don't think I have any oh here we go you can go to the dollar store and get the drawer liners right you can get these you can cut them round and put them on your turntable so that way nothing is shifting okay all righty so to get us started again i have my six inch round and i taped it to my larger round right here so that way there's no shifting or anything like that and this will be easy for me to peel off once i need to take it off if i have to top it on something else you tend to want to do this on a board that the customer is not going to get or a friend family member whatever and then that way this board isn't messed up and then you can retape this on a nice clean board you know that your customer or a friend will see we're going to add a little bit of buttercream if you're just joining in what's up how you doing hey i'm jelena i'm your expert cake artist here i've been doing cake for 16 years 
a lot of trial and error. So I got all the information you need. All of it. All of it. Sorry, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, someone said, I'm going to try to bake a cake tonight so hopefully I can use your tips oh yeah that'll be awesome I'd love to see it too if you post it on Instagram tag me on it uh at Jelena Simpson because I'd love to see it good tip thanks wow thank you for the tips you're welcome you're very much welcome I haven't done this in a while where I go live about cake I normally go live about how to run a successful business because that's my job my job I actually mentor women and coach women on how to run a successful home-based business, entrepreneurs who either, one, have an idea for their business, uh, for a business and don't know how to start it, or two, have a business they've started and don't know how to grow it. So those tend to be my clients. I'm gonna explain to you how to frost the cake on the second one. So the second one, you see when I took it out of the pan, I kind of scratched the sides of it that doesn't matter that doesn't matter at all that's perfectly fine and you see I'm putting them upside down because the flat part will be more of the top and I'm making sure you want to line it up right you want to always line it up check around make sure one side's not hanging over more than the other this is important if you don't take care of this once you frost your entire cake you're screwed right and you don't want to be screwed Another thing, don't waste paper towels. It's bad for the environment. Get yourself rags that you use only for the kitchen. These are rags I only use for the kitchen um, and use for when I'm baking. So that way you can easily wipe things down, wipe your hands and keep it damp. I'm trying to read comments too. How do I make the buttercream? I actually have a YouTube video on that. Um, if you go on YouTube and just look up Jelena Simpson. Um, yeah, I have a YouTube video of how I make my buttercream. So that way you can have more like instructions on that. Do you make your own buttercream? Yes, I do. All right, so the way that you frost your layers is you wanna put buttercream on there. So you can use a spatula. Now my buttercream is all nice and fluffy. Let me take the, this out of it. I wanna make sure I show you as much as possible. So maybe a little, a little peak of the buttercream here. So you wanna get a little dollop, drop that on top of your cake. Sometimes more is helpful because you can always scrape off, right? Now you get your offset spatula, all right? And I want you to watch my wrist. I'm gonna go back and forth. You see my arm not moving, right? I'm gonna go back and forth. We're not moving my arm. And if you recognize my left hand, I'm actually turning my turntable little bit by little bit. And if you see what's happening is I'm actually spreading my buttercream. I'm not trying to smooth it. I'm not trying to smooth it. What I'm doing is I'm spreading. So that way now each nook and cranny on the level is covered. That's all I'm worried about right now, right? And then once I notice that everything is covered, now I'm gonna smooth it. Now watch, I'm gonna leave my spatula down here and I'm just gonna turn this arm is not moving my hand is not moving this hand is make, turning the turntable i'm just going to turn and do you notice my my offset spatula is in an angle it's not flat down let me show you what happens if you leave your spatula flat down you see what happens it's messing it all up it's no pretty no pretty no look at that Ugh. right no we don't want to do that we want to Put it here and then turn it up a little bit. Like it's wiping it off, right? And then you go a little bit faster, right? And then the other thing, let me give you another tip. This, Cause this is a lot of amateurs do this. You will take your spatula and you will lift up. And when you do that, if you push down hard enough and you lift up, when you do that, you pull buttercream off, which will then pull your cake. So you, then you're gonna have a hole. So don't ever pull spatula off cake off of the side of it, never do that. The way you wanna do it, now watch, the way you wanna do it is you wanna slowly slide it off. Y'all saw how nice that looked? I know, I know, it looked nice. All right, cool, so that's pretty, that's pretty leveled right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can put another layer on here and just keep it to three layers, but I like a tall cake. I like it to be 
tall and beautiful, uh, obnoxiously huge. So I'm actually not gonna put another layer right here, okay? So I just wanted to show you what it looked like to frost a layer. What I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna put bubble straws in here for support, a, a um, cake board here for support, and then I'm actually going to stack my other two cakes. So now what happens is the heaviness from the top of the cake is not pushing down on the bottom of the cake and my cake won't split in half. So you need to have cake support, okay? I'm gonna read the comments because I don't wanna make sure I don't wanna miss anything. Um, how do you make your own buttercream? Do you make it? Is there a best recipe? Is there a best recipe for what? Buttercream? So the buttercream I am using, I made is an American crusted buttercream. That's if you guys, uh, like your local grocery store, Walmart, Publix, Kroger's, um, Whole Foods, you know, whatever your local grocery store is, more or less they make an American crusted buttercream on their cakes in the bakery section. And what that is, is they use shortening, they use butter, they use powdered sugar and they use some sort of extract. It's a high fat ratio buttercream and it's just like your your grocery store buttercream. That's what it's like. But you can always use this recipe and alternate it, which is that's why I love it. You can turn it into chocolate buttercream. You can turn it into um, cream cheese buttercream. And it's perfect for warm weather like we're having right now where it's getting really hot. So this is nice because what happens is the longer it sits out here, it will crust. Not in a disgusting way. Like it just kind of has a little it'll be stiff that's basically what it, it'll get a little bit stiff on the outside so that way it kind of has like a protective layer which is perfect for um hot weather so that's my go-to recipe is an american crusted buttercream i don't do any of that swiss meringue buttercream that's way too soft i've lived in florida the majority of my entire life south florida and now i live in georgia it's very hot here swiss meringue buttercream is not our friend so i don't even waste my time with that um great thanks what if I don't have all the tools? If you don't have all the tools, places that you can go to is your local Walmart. You can go to Michael's Arts and Crafts, Amazon, or you can actually Google search cake supply store in your local area. All you need is everything that I'm showing you right now, which all I have is cake pans. So whatever cake pans you have, a serrated knife, which every household has this. If they don't, ask your neighbor or your mama. Trust me, she got it. An offset spatula, this costs no more than $4. No more than $4. This is not even a name brand one. This is just a simple one that I think I found out, I got at Walmart, like $4. And the, everything else is just a cake board. If you are not a professional baker and you're like, I don't wanna invest in cake boards, which you can also get at Walmart in the Wilton aisle, um, usually by the arts and crafts and stuff like that, you can just use paper plates. Those work just as fine, just as good. But if you're gonna make a tall cake, you do need support. So you would need some bubble straws. A lot of people use wooden dowels. I don't like using wooden dowels for the simple fact that using wooden dowels um, aren't uh, sturdy enough because if I have a flimsy cardboard and the moisture from the buttercream is getting in the flimsy cardboard, then all that's gonna happen is my wooden dowels is gonna stick right through it, right? And again, I make really tall cakes, so I don't like to waste my time on something that's not gonna work. So, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bubble straws in here, all right? And I gotta grab my scissors. Scissors. I should use different scissors, but it's okay. So because it's such a small cake, I don't need to put a lot of these. I'm actually only gonna use three. And so I'm gonna do it in a triangle Excuse me. If this was a larger cake and the bottom tier, meaning that there's gonna be another tier that goes on top, I would use more bobo straws and I would start with making a square with them. And you wanna make sure when you cut them, you cut right where the buttercream stopped at. So you're gonna get a little buttercream on your scissors, y'all. Oh, and I messed up, messed it up, but that's okay. I can fix it back. Okay. See, that's why that kitchen rag is useful. All right, we're just gonna push these back down. That's always the fun part. 
Now you can save these and use them for another cake because as you see, this definitely can be used for another cake. I'm just gonna put that off to the side and I'm gonna fix my buttercream on top. Now, also I would like to say that when you put a board in between, I normally wouldn't put this much buttercream, but because I wanted to show you how to frost the layer, that's why, I normally wouldn't put that much. I would just put like a little bit. But what you do wanna do is go back around. You see those holes? You wanna go back around and cover those holes. So I'm gonna go and just plop some buttercream on them, right? And then I'm gonna go around and just kind of smooth that off. Okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cake board on. I can't see. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do this. All right. So another tip before I go on, so that way you guys know what I'm doing. I like to have a crumb cut nearby. I don't have a cup nearby. I would have to walk that way and I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just gonna use this shortening container where I got my shortening out of. Now what a crumb cup is, it's just something that you can put the buttercream that has crumbs in it in. So I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna wipe around And as I wipe around, you see that but you see the crumbs and the buttercream. I don't want to put this back on the cake because I want this to be nice, clean, and white on the outside. Okay. So I'm just gonna grab my cup, and this is where I put that at. All right. Now, if you have a crumb cup, you can always reuse this buttercream to crumb coat, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. I just want to scrape this off so I can have some sort of visual of where the end of the cake is. Okay. Clean it off good because you don't want any, you don't want to transfer crumbs anywhere. There we go. Voila. And now I'm going to stick this on here. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm not missing questions. Why not measure then cut? Um, you could do both. You could do both. Uh, a lot of people stick the bobo straw in what this person's asking is what happens is you can stick the bobo straw in and a lot of people will have like a marker or an edible marker and mark that area pull it out line all the straws together and cut me personally i find it way better for me to cut as it's in the cake because anytime i've done that before i end up cutting all the strong all the straws not the same exact size so i enjoy doing it this way but you could do both there's no right or wrong way about this No, let me say this again. There's no right or wrong way in either or of those because there is a wrong way, just not in the ones that I just mentioned. So I'm gonna put this on top. I wanna push down on this to make sure there's no air bubbles. Push it over a little bit. Okay, make sure it's all lined up. If it's not, shift it now. You can fix buttercream that messes up. That's not a problem. What you can't fix is a cake that's cracked in half. Okay, so you wanna make sure you take care of all of this right now. Okay. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna put some buttercream on here to ensure that my cake stays in place. We don't want any shifting, especially during travel. If you're trying to be a cake artist, if this is something you aspire to be, the travel part is the worst part, okay? Practice, practice makes perfect of where your cakes are gonna sit in the car, if you're gonna have someone help you, the reason why I keep pushing down on my layers is because I wanna make sure there's no air bubbles. Air bubbles can mess up your buttercream. It, like you'll have bubbles on the side of your buttercream, especially with the heat right now. Cool. If you wanna know what cake recipes I use, Betty Crocker, okay? Box mix cake, okay? There's nothing wrong with box mix cake. Don't let anybody tell you differently, all right? I was able to sell uh, cakes that cost me $30 to make for $500 plus dollars uh, to famous people and all of that. So don't let nobody tell you wrong, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with box mix cake. 
You can bake from scratch if you want to, but don't shame nobody if they want to use box mix cake. Sometimes you got to look at the money and the logistics of it and stop thinking that one is better than the other. If it works for you, it works for you, babe. You do you. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and go back and forth. Why do you need the cardboard between the layers? Why didn't you need a board between the first two? Okay, so what happens is uh, my cakes are really tall, right? When you normally see your local bakery in a grocery store bake cakes, they will take this layer and cut it in half, right? And so now that's two layers. So they have very small layers. I like a thick layer because I also like a tall cake. When my cakes are super tall, what happens is when I put decorations on it, everything starts to get heavy and weigh it down. So I want to make sure I have enough support. You don't want to put, uh, for me, for my cakes, I don't want to put um, cardboard in between each layer because when they're cutting the layers, I want it to be two layers they're cutting into. So they're going to get a tall layer piece of cake, right? You are more than welcome to do it that way. But for me, you're wasting too much product to put a board in between each one. When one board between each two layers is suffice, it'll do be just fine for you. And again, the board and the bubble straws are support. When people you when people create tall cakes or when people create cakes and put toppers on them and stuff like that, you need support. You don't think that those toppers are gonna like make your cake fall apart, but they do because you have to remember all this is all this is is flour and sugar. That's all this is. And it's just formed together to create some sort of bread. You ever drop bread on the floor and you see it crack? That's what can happen to this. Stuff weighs it down where it makes it heavy and it can crack and crack in half. I've had cakes that split in half because I didn't put support in the middle of it. But you don't have to overly support it. Hopefully that answered the question. I am brand new to this. Well, welcome. Welcome. Not a problem. I, I welcome all questions, all comments whatever you want to know let, let me know this is a free cake class child i'm gonna teach you everything um thank you for saying that love me a good doctored up box cake listen you know what doctored up box cake means that means you've been around in the cake world yes i love a doctored up box cake mix um on my youtube channel i've done a couple of doctored box cake mixes so you may want to check that out because i've done some really delicious flavors with jello mm, delicious all right so i'm going to show it again for anybody that's coming in like new right now remember this arm is stiff this is my spatula holding arm my right hand my left hand is going to turn the turntable okay i'm just going to be moving back and forth with my wrist because what am i trying to smooth it no remember we're not trying to smooth right now all i'm trying to do is cover the layers so i'm going back and forth and now that i see my layers are covered nice and sufficient i'm going to go ahead and go around Now I've taught people all around the nation um, on cakes. I've gone to different states. I've taught here locally and you never get it right the first time. I'm gonna say that right now. You're gonna do this and you're gonna go, oh, I'm gonna try to do it like Jelena. And then you're gonna get frustrated because you're not doing it like me. It's only because for me, I could do this with my eyes closed, which I have done it with my eyes closed. I could do this with my eyes closed because muscle memory. I've done this for 16 years. My muscles remember everything. Remember I told you I hadn't even baked the cake in a year, right? Because I've been working on my other business. But my body remembers what I'm doing. So when you do this for the first time, it's not going to be perfect. But practice it, right? It's not hard, okay? It's not hard at all. Just keep practicing and then you will definitely get it, all right? I'm going to pull off some of this extra buttercream. Blah. Pull off some of this extra buttercream. Put it in my crumb cup. Get my buttercream that fell here. I need you. Not throwing away good buttercream. Mm -mm. Okay. And now my last layer. I do not need to put bobo straws in this one. If I was planning on decorating this cake with like a bunch of heavy stuff, I would put bobo straws in it at the end, like right before I'm ready to decorate. That's when I would put some sort of inside support. But for this one, I'm showing you just to do crumb coating and final coating. I don't need to put any support. Okay. Last layer. Look how tall and beautiful she is. Ain't she gorgeous? Ain't she gorgeous? She just gorgeous. She ain't got no business being all this gorgeous. Giving me life. Life. Uh, 
Have you ever tried making a cake with fruit in the middle? Yes. You mean not fruit in the middle of the cake, but fruit in the middle of the layers? Is that what you're talking about? A filling? Yes. I've done that before too. Use box cake myself. Whoop, whoop. Uh, love them. Love from Sir Surname. Oh, hi. Love from Georgia in America. How do you fill cakes with a filling like strawberry jam? So what you would do is you would put a very thin layer of buttercream, very thin, not as thick as I put here, a thin layer of buttercream. And then you would put your, um, and then what I would do is put buttercream in a piping bag. Okay. If you don't know what a piping bag is, let me pull one out for you. Oh, these are big piping bags. Oh, geez, I didn't even know I bought these giant ones. Okay, this is a piping bag. You can actually buy them smaller. This is huge. I did not know I this was I bought these giant ones. So piping bags are like this. You can actually put stuff inside of them, buttercream inside of them, and then at the end you snip the end for a hole, and you can put a piping tip. So you're gonna put some buttercream in that, and then you're gonna make a round dam okay a dam think of beavers and how they put a dam to close off the water from coming so i'm going to put a dam all here about a half an inch up all right depending on how thick you want your filling about a half an inch up and then in that little pool area i'm going to fill that in with jam and smooth it to be nice and even okay that dam is going to protect any of that jam falling out okay so that takes practice also because that not something you're gonna get on the first time sometimes you make a mistake then you're gonna put the next layer on top and you're gonna do exactly what I'm doing is give it a little push down not too hard but give it a little push down to get rid of any air bubbles to make sure the jam is sitting on the bottom of the top layer of the cake right push it nice and down and boom that's how you do a filling <laughs> I know I make it sound like there's so many steps but actually it's really really easy to do mmm Glad I stumbled across this. I'm making my niece's first birthday smash cake this weekend. Woohoo! Check out Jelena Simpson on YouTube. You're gonna get a plethora of different cakes that I teach for beginners, advanced. I sculpt a lot of modeling chocolate. You guys can check that out too. Does the cardboard need to be the same size as the pan or can it be a bit smaller? So for a cake like this, it can definitely be a bit smaller. Um, so I can always cut my six inch because this is a six inch cake. These are six inch pans I can always cut my six inch board to be a, a, a bit smaller or you can buy like four inch and five inches but I didn't and I didn't go to the store to buy it but yes you can um, but the bigger your cake becomes I would say you always want to make sure that the cardboard is the same exact size every time you want to have a baseboard you see that six inch board down here and you always want to have a center board and for me I like those to match up every time because when I go to put buttercream, it makes it easier to understand where I'm putting all the buttercream at, which you'll see as I final coat it. Hola, hola, como estas? Hello. Alrighty, so now we want a crumb coat, all right? So if you've gotten this far on your cake, you're ready for crumb coating. And crumb coating is exactly what it sounds like. You are gonna frost your cake and the reason why it's called crumb coat is because all the crumbs are gonna be in there and also we wanna frost it so that way we can hold in all of the crumbs, okay? So I'm actually going to go ahead and grab, remember my crumb cup? All the buttercream that has crumbs in it already and I'm just gonna use that. And I'm not even gonna like be so professional with y'all. Look, you could just go up and down. I know you've probably seen somebody going like this, right? which is perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But I've noticed also, the longer you stay like this, the more your arm starts to hurt and your shoulders. So you can always go like this because all I'm looking for is to cover. I'm not looking for smoothness, remember. You always wanna do the hard job first and then go and clean it up, right? So right now, all I wanna do is cover. So I'm just ooh, dropping buttercream on my table. I don't have a lot in here. 
So I'm just trying to grab what I can. And then I'm gonna tell you about a no-no you don't wanna do. Grab the buttercream fill on my table, okay. Listen, clean as you go, because the mess can build up real quick. So you always wanna take the time to wipe things off. Okay. Alrighty, so you see I have some buttercream here, right? This crumb coating does not need to be super thick. It just needs to be a nice thin layer. Because then after you crumb coat, you're going to stick the cake in the fridge or the freezer, whichever. And for all of you who are like, oh, you put cake in the freezer, let me tell you something. Anywhere you've ever gotten your cake from has been in the freezer. Okay? Everywhere. Um, the reason why cakes go in the freezer is to keep them, one, chilled and fresh. Two, it's easier to frost a chilled cake because if this was warm or room temperature, it would be falling apart right now because the buttercream is so heavy on it, it would be ripping it from each other, from itself. So make sure uh, you make room in your refrigerator or in your freezer so then that way you can put it in there in between the times that you're buttercreaming it and the times that you're decorating it. I'm a freezer girl, it happens quick and fast. I can put it in there for a good 15 minutes and then take it out and it's into the touch when you touch and there's nothing on your finger it's perfect now I'm not gonna stick this in my clean buttercream that I have here in this ugh, I'm not gonna do that because all I'm gonna do is get crumbs in there okay so I'm just gonna use a clean spatula and put a dollop on top okay Remember, we don't want to mess up our clean buttercream. I just want to cover every nook and cranny. That's all I want to do. You see this? I'm not even doing any professional pan gesture movement because I'm not even going to put y'all through that. If this is new for you, girl, do what you can do, okay? The only thing I would say is don't do this. You know, I see people do this and I'm like, yo, that's gonna take you a lot more longer than what you needed to take you. So please, for heaven's sakes, make smooth, smooth scrapes, okay? Smooth scrapes up and down. All right, I'm gonna make sure I get the bottom half. You see how I'm covering that bottom board down there? That's why I put this board, because if I would have to pick this cake up, my finger would stick into the cake. So you always want to have your security board, this big, huge, giant 10 inch board that I have. All right, I'm just scraping any extra buttercream off. Scraping it into my crumb cup. I'm going to clean up the top. I see, I see a conversation happening. I will respond in a minute. All right, boom, clean off the top. Look how straight that is. Y'all see how straight this is? Y'all need to practice that technique. Do not move your dominant hand. Your non-dominant hand will move the turntable, okay? It's one of those things like rubbing your belly and tapping your head type of thing. All right. So this is the crumb cup, I mean crumb cup. This is the crumb layer. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. So you see all of this, that doesn't, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But if you're trying to be a perfectionist, fine, fine, I'll fix it, hold on. For all you perfectionists out there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stick her in the fridge. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Hold on. Let me just go stick her in the fridge and I'm going to answer any of the questions that I've missed. I'll be right back.
Okay. So she's gonna be in the freezer. I'm gonna leave her there for a few minutes. I'm gonna clean up my area. So then that way, when I bring her back out, we're gonna make her a little party. Okay, she's about to be a little party. She's gonna be all put together. Nice and clean. So let me show you what I'm working with here so that way you don't think that, oh, look how clean and perfect her space is. I'm gonna show you what I'm working with. So I have a silicone mat here. I put this here to make sure that one, nothing is shifting around, and two, it catches any crumbs that may come on my board or on my countertop. Um, and then it's easy for me just to pick this up and then dump out whatever trash is on top of it, any crumbs, right? So that's one. Two, I have my turntable here, I have my buttercream here, and on this side, I have my crumb cup that I was using, and then I also have a tray. You always wanna have a tray nearby, so that way you can put everything that you're putting back in the sink or that you don't need there, so you can pick it up all at once, right? I'm just gonna give you these little kitchen tips because I've come a long way from what my kitchen used to look like when I would do cakes versus what it is now, I would have stuff everywhere, everywhere. There would be buttercream everywhere. Oh my God, on my elbows, all over the place. There would be cake scraps everywhere. I would have pans everywhere. There was, a, it, was an or, it was not organized, it was just a big mess. And now I'm an organized mess. So there may be stuff everywhere, but it's a little more organized. It's not disastrous. It's not confusing to have to deal with. I'm not searching for stuff and I don't feel overwhelmed because when you become a baker, when you decide to take that crazy leap and become a baker and follow in my footsteps, you're not doing it for the money, that's for sure. You're doing it because you like to be creative and that tends to make you feel a little chaotic, especially if you're trying to run a business. So the more organized you are, the better. Hold on, I wanna make sure I'm reaching um blah, 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 blah. oh oh i miss all that um how many cakes do you make to get them so tall how so how many cakes do you make to get them so tall so that one that six inch was four layers it was four layers high um love from gerald texas hi texas hey girl or boy hey uh, where do you buy all your supplies? Love your page. Thanks, babes. Um, I actually get my supplies in different places. So I'll shop Amazon. I sh we have a local cake supply store here. They don't ever have what I need. Um, so they're usually like my last minute resort. Like I'll drive over there. They're 15 minutes away from me. I'll drive over there if I actually really need something. And then um, the other one, it would be like little, little places. So like my scraper. I had this custom made with my logo on it, with my baking logo on it. But if you're starting out in the baking world, I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna use. Ooh, I don't even think I have it, child. Oh, I don't have it. I don't have it. That's okay, I don't got it. Um, <laughs> but let me tell you where you can go. Home Depot is my number one place to shop for cake supplies. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds bizarre. Um, but Home Depot will actually have some things that cake people use. So there's something called a bench scraper. You see painters use them on their walls because they'll scrape their walls. Um, so in the painting department in Home Depot and in Lowe's or in your local um, tool store or whatever, uh, you can find a paint scraper, a bench scraper. Um, you can get those and they're tall metal flat pieces that you can use to smooth out your cake, your buttercream. Um, your offset spatulas, like I said before, you can actually get them from Walmart. They have these at Walmart. You can get it from Michael's Arts and Craft. You can get them from Hobby Lobby. So this is like a lot of different places I've shopped at through my years and purchased some things from. My turntable, uh, there's different turntables out there. Like there's this one. There's this one that you can actually get from Michael's Arts and Craft. It's very basic, it turns. You can pull this apart so that way you can wash it and stuff like that. It says Wilton, which is the name brand of the cake supplies, of a big cake supply company. So there's several different places you can actually shop. Mm, my 
cakes always have a big bump on top and then I cut it off. The cake is so small. Hmm. Okay, so are you talking about when you bake, when you bake your cakes and in the pan, they have a bump. Is that what you mean? Because uh, maybe you missed the beginning, but for me, sometimes my cakes have a bump also, whether it's big or it's small. I bake my cakes. Let me back up. I'm going to start over for anybody that missed it. So I do not spray my cakes. I don't spray them with the butter spray or anything. I don't uh, butter my pans and put flour in it. I don't do that. That butter shrinks your cake and I don't like a shrunken cake and it distorts it. It makes it all distorted on the sides. Excuse me. I get parchment paper and I cut it into a circle into the size of the pan. I put it at the bottom. I pour my batter in the pan. Okay. Once my cake is baked, I take it straight from the oven and it goes straight into my freezer so it can immediately chill. And I, I don't need it frozen, I need it chilled, which means it's still a little squishy, but you can tell it's like super, super, super cold, right? So if I cut into it, no crumbs are gonna fall everywhere, all right? So once I have it nice and chilled, I take a serrated knife, which is also, you see that serratedness, which is also called a bread knife. I line it up against my pan and I cut. I cut that bump off, okay? If the bump doesn't go above the pan, you're pretty good. You really don't need to cut it off if it doesn't go above the pan, okay? So hopefully that helps you out a little bit on how you can level your cakes. But you can also purchase a cake leveler, which is kind of this big tool that you can kind of like jigsaw your cakes and it'll cut it nice and straight. Um, but for me, that's a money waster because I do it this way every time and I don't have to spend that extra money. Jesus loves you, baby. Let me tell you something. God loves you too. And so does Jesus, baby. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry if this is a dumb question. There's no such thing as dumb questions. There's a such thing as dumb answers. Because people can ask very intelligent questions, but then people respond back with an idiot response. So there's no such thing as a dumb question. But does adding this cake board technically increase the servings? No. Mm -mm. So servings are um what your cake is offering right whatever else you added on there is not a serving so the cake so the cake board is just to um add some support for your cake so that way the cake is not falling apart right for anybody that's just joining in hi hello you don't see a cake here because i put it in the freezer but i'll be taking it out in a couple of minutes so just be patient okay um but yeah so your serving is what your cake is providing not anything that's supporting the cake um, the boards are just used for support so that way we can make sure that my cake isn't going to fall apart. Um, also, I had a total thought. Um, yeah, I had a total thought and I can't even think about it. I just went straight up my brain. But yeah, no, it doesn't add to extra servings. My, my cake technically, um, has a large serving size, meaning usually that uh cakes tend to be about that the layers tend to be about this thin when you get a cake from a bakery because they actually take one cake and they cut that in half so then they make that two layers i don't like that i like i like cake like i like to eat the cake right and i feel like cake to buttercream ratio sometimes doesn't match when you order a cake from somebody sometimes it has an overwhelming a, an amount of buttercream and like that thin amount of cake so i like a thick layer of cake so that's why i keep mine whole but if you go to other places you'll see that they actually cut theirs in half and and then so there's they use two of them and that right there that increases the serving size uh not serving size but that in, that keeps their serving size and keeps their wages down so now they don't have to bake two cakes but they just bake one cake. So my cakes are a little bit more expensive. Thank you for taking the time to teach us. No, thank you for the take thank you for taking the time to come and learn. I appreciate you. Uh reaching out to build your education is a big thing. So thank you. Thanks so much. Um sent TikTok times 25. I don't know what that means, but I really appreciate that. Thank you for sending me whatever it is, TikTok something tw times 25 times, K K 
Cash 54 Gucci 2.0. I appreciate you. Thank you. Which I'm assuming is some sort of TikTok gift. So thank you so much. I've never actually gone live before, so I'm not sure what all that means. Um, do, do you be honest and tell the customer it's box cake? So I'm, I never lie to my customers. Honesty is a big thing for me. But let me tell you something. I don't offer that information. I don't, I don't, I don't just go, oh, girl, I'm just going to give you a box mix cake. It's all good. I don't say that. I ask them what they want. And if they tell me red velvet, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to the grocery store to pick up a red velvet box mix cake. If they want to know, well, what's the ingredients or how you bake it, then I'm totally honest with them about it. Sorry, I put chapstick on. I do every live I ever go in, this is what happens. You would think I'd be embarrassed by now, but I'm not. I put chapstick on. You know when you put chapstick on, it gives like that white line? That's what I feel like. Um, so no, I don't lie to my customers, but let me tell you business, okay? Let me tell you business. A lot of people think, oh, I have to have the best ingredients and it's gotta be organic. That's when they waste their money. You trying to get strawberries that cost $5 one strawberry? Sweetie, no. Okay, I want to spend the least amount of money on my ingredients so I can take home the largest amount of profit. All right, so I'm always about business. My, cake, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to reinvent anything. I'm not trying to reinvent uh, the vanilla cake. I'm not reinventing chocolate. Guess who already did it? Betty Crocker and Pillsbury Doughboy. They did it for us. They did the hard work. I don't need to change that up. Not to mention, I actually like box mix cake. Box mix cake. If you buy cupcakes or cakes from the grocery store, that's what you get in. You get box mix cake. They don't advertise that it's box mix cake. They don't even tell you. They don't even tell you. No. Nope. When you buy the box mix cake, sorry, my something's in my eyeball. When you buy your box mix cake and then you go to the grocery store. I mean, when you go to the grocery store and buy a cake, and they and it's you know when in the bakery section you can like pick out the pre-made cakes. What is on the label? It doesn't say Betty Crocker box mix cake. It doesn't say grocery store box mix cake. It says all of the ingredients, all of it. And customers don't care. They don't. Your average customer does not care if your cake is box mix or made from scratch. You want to know what they care about? People who order from me, they want the show. They want that shit to be beautiful, tall, gorgeous. They want it to be everything they've ever seen on TV. They want it to be flying dragons. They want all the works. That's what they want. That's it. And if it's delicious, boom, that's a plus. They don't go, oh, I want it to be so moist and so delicious and very pretty. No, they tell me I want big, beautiful, expensive, and it to taste good. So if taste is their second thing, then... They don't care if it's a box mix cake. I've actually had famous people order from me and they didn't even want a cake. They just wanted a showpiece. So the work that I do, it's not about flavor so much or trying to get the best flavor combinations. It's more or less showpiece because I'm about money and increasing my pockets. So yeah, I know that sounds kind of like, oh, you're, um, you're playing your customers. No, I'm giving them exactly what they want. They want a showpiece. You know, you go to the birthday parties and you see the big old cakes there and everything's cute and adorable and the first birthday parties and all that. Yeah, I do those. Those cakes cost thousands of dollars, right? My, my smallest cake is $500. The cake that we're doing right now, I would sell that for $500. And it would sell because that's how good I am at my job. And, and no, I know that sounds arrogant, but when you've done something for 16 years, you're very confident. So, yeah. But I don't want anybody to get deterred about making cake from box mix and making cake from scratch. Whatever you feel you want to make for your business that you're trying to grow, do that. Don't listen to anybody else's why they do it the way they do it. I do it this way because it works for me, right? I'm, I never consider myself a baker. I would never sit here and go, well, I'm a baker. No, I'm a cake artist right? I'm, I'm an artist. All, I, all I'm doing is using cake as my medium. So how I make that cake, shit, I don't even want to bake the cake. I want someone else to bake the cake. Oh my God. I'm like, it says 24 new messages. Lord, okay. I gotta go faster. Sorry. Uh, what's the difference between straight and curved spatula? There's no such thing as straight and curved spatula. There's a spatula and then there's an offset spatula. So that's the names of them. This is an offset spatula. This is actually a smaller offset spatula. I'm gonna find. Mm. You know, so many questions. Where is my spatulas? All right, so this is an offset spatula. They have bigger spatulas too, longer ones. This is an offset spatula. 
this is a regular spatula, right? Which I'm sure everybody has this, right? This is a regular spatula. This is an offset spatula. And let me not lie. They actually do have spatulas that have the straight, the straight, um, I guess it would be called a straight spatula. So there's no such thing as a curved one where it's just straight out. I don't like using those. The offset spatula is what works for me, but people use both of them when they frost um, cakes. For me, it's a little bit more harder to deal with the straight ones. How do you organize? Oh, it zoomed up y'all. Okay, hold on. Where, where did she go? Where'd she go? I'm trying to go back to the question. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Do you tell him? Oh, how do you organize your tools and everything you have for your cake business? Okay, so when I was doing my cake business, because I quit my cake business, I didn't really quit. I retired because I was doing it for 15 years. Um, I retired my cake business uh, this year in January on my birthday. Um, and the way that I had organized all my supplies was on my pegboard right here. Um, but since then I've changed out my pegboard to be my arts and craft pegboard. So where I keep all of my supplies at, if you guys want to see is here. So all of my cake supplies are actually in here in the, in this dresser in my little studio. So I normally have it here on the back wall where it's easy, where I can just turn around and grab what I need. So I would recommend that for anybody that doesn't have a lot of space of where they live or where they're working from to utilize your walls as much as possible. <laughs> buttercream is a type of ice and I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm sorry, did I miss someone's question about buttercream? How can you make buttercream not so sweet? Oh, okay, so I see it. Um, the way that you make buttercream not so sweet is you don't put a lot of um, powdered sugar in it, but then also you can sprinkle some salt in there so that way you can offset the balance and use um, unsalted butter. So my buttercream recipe, I use shortening, a high ratio fat shortening. I use uns um, unsalted butter. I use um, an extract that I wanna flavor it with and I use a milk-based liquid. Um, I don't use water because water kind of thins it out a little bit and I like mine to be still fluffy and nice. If you notice, nice and fluffy, right? Look at that. Ooh, so nice and so shiny. Um, so yeah, if you want to uh, use my recipe for American Crested Buttercream, that's on my YouTube channel. Just search Jelena Simpson on YouTube. Mm, I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone's questions. Is there a difference between icing and buttercream or is the same thing? Yes, there is a difference. Buttercream is this. Okay, that's what you're frosting your cakes with. Icing is what you normally frost a cookie with. And icing is powdered sugar and some sort of liquid, so maybe water or milk, and that makes an icing. And then that's what they put on cookies. So you do you know like the, the black and white cookie where it's round and half of it is chocolate and the other half is white? Yeah, that's icing. <laughs> I aspire to be like you. <laughs> Baby, aspire to be better than me. But I appreciate you saying that. Um, that was from Very Airy. Aries. So thank you. I appreciate you saying that. $500, girl, that's crazy. I know it's crazy. And it's a nice living. It's Listen, if you can sell your artwork, because that's what I have. That's what I do. I do art. This isn't a cake for me. That's the extra part. All right. That's the extra part. And if you're looking for a showstopper, then you're going to seek out the best person to do that for you. All right. When you when y'all go and buy your iPads and your iPhones and your I Apple Watches and you go out there buy your Nike shoes, y'all willing to spend two hundred, a thousand dollars on that? Why not spend something like that on somebody's artwork? This isn't just a piece of cake. This is artwork. I've created dragons. I've created lions. I've created bears. I've created Winnie the Pooh, and I don't mean like created them to be like, oh, look at these cute little cakes. No, I've sculpted these things by hand. That's art. This isn't, I didn't have a pan that had Winnie the Pooh's face on it. I hand sculpted that bear myself. Okay. I've hand sculpted a lion's head myself. That's artwork. People think it's crazy when it's $500 because it's box mix cake. Do you know where the clothes on, on your body come from? Taiwan in a little factory where a little kid sewed that together. That is crazy. That is the definition of insane. 
So think about those things when you think about the amount of money you're spending on your everyday life around you versus art, versus a once in a million lifetime scenario. I will never remake a cake ever. I've never remade a cake ever. I've always, every cake I've ever made, it was my first time making it and it was my last time making it. So you get a once in a lifetime piece of art from me. Yeah, $500 for sure. Yes, get your coins. Thank you. But come on now, box cake tastes great. Exactly. Please tell them. Box me. Listen, that's what y'all been eating your whole life where you think your mom's in there baking from shit. She ain't baking for no scratch. She's tired. She's exhausted. She about to put three eggs together, a cup of water, a half a cup of oil, put it in a bowl, mix it together, pop that bad boy in the oven for 35 minutes, and boom, you got a nice warm, and I always like my cakes a little bit warm, warm cake and put some vanilla buttercream on that. Who has time for all that other shenanigans? I don't. I don't have that type of time. I'm a mom of two. Um, they want art. This is technically edible. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. See, I'm I'm like I'm 20 messages behind y'all, so I'm like answering these now as you guys are commenting. How are you doing? I'm doing great, babes. Thanks for asking me. How are you doing? Do you alter the mix, like the cake mix? So yeah. So that's called the doctored um, cake mix. So you can definitely alter the mix, which I always suggest also. So you can always add a little bit more vanilla extract. You can add. You can use milk instead of water. You can actually use um, uh, pudding. Uh, pudding in the cake and that makes it a little more denser you can act uh, uh, like jello pudding is what i mean um you can actually um add several different things to a box mix cake fruit i've made um pineapple cake where i've added chunks of pineapple to it or strawberry where i added ch uh, chunks of strawberry to it so you, you can definitely doctor up a box mix cake box mix is really just a base that's all it is it's just a base and it definitely can help you out um during your baking journey because if you can't um, get, like, if you can't go, okay, I have my vanilla cake recipes on point, then use a doctored mix, uh, doctor up some mixes until you actually figure out how you want your cake to taste. And you can always then make that from scratch by working with ingredients. But that's a totally different episode. Maybe we'll do an episode where I'm baking from scratch so y'all don't think that I don't bake from scratch. I do, just not on my cakes because I'm not spending all that type of money. Uh, is, is it one full box mix for one six inch tin? Your cakes look so tall. Um, no. So one box mix for two six inches, one box mix for two, right? One box mix for an eight inch. So one box mix will fill an eight inch pan. One box mix will fill two six inch pans. A uh, couple more questions and I'm going to go get the cake more it throwing the box mix cake more to it than throwing a box mix cake together. Um, not too sure what that was mean. Exactly. So the free cake class is to tell us to just buy box mix. No, baby. I think you missed the entire beginning of this. But stick around so you can see the ending. Laugh my life. Amen. They sure did do all that work for us. Correct. Facts. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, meringue. Swiss meringue cream. Swiss meringue buttercream is definitely another type of buttercream. I don't like buttercream. Is there an alternative that's also smooth like buttercream? Which I'm assuming that person's answering your question when they're saying Swiss meringue buttercream. Is it six by two or six by four cake pans? This is a six by two. A six by four would be taller. So this is a six by two. I don't like to buy six by four because that means then I would have to cut that in half and I don't like to have to cut it in half. Those are gifts. Okay, thank you. Do you use the box purse? Oh, okay, I've already answered that question. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cake. I'm gonna grab the cake, and then we can put the final coat on it. I'll be right back. Let me go grab it. Okay. So look, remember when I said you wanna make sure your cake is firm to the touch? When you take it out, you hear that? And look, no buttercream on my fingers. That's how you want it. That's a chilled cake. That's the definition of a chilled cake. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to frost this for all of you who've been waiting for me to finish the frost it. Putting everything away that I don't need. I'm gonna take a sip of water because I've been talking this whole time. All righty. Okay, let's put you back a little bit. 
How do you achieve white buttercream without using a white food coloring? Mine always pale yellow. It's yellow because of the butter you're using. You can actually find white butter. So then that way you don't get that yellow tone. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to do a final coat. And remember when we did the crumb coat? Remember the reason why I called it a crumb coat was because it's going to lock in all those crumbs. So now when I do the final coat, all the crumbs aren't going to come on the outside. You see that? And remember I told you what the what the key is when you first touch your cake with buttercream? It's not to smooth, it's to cover. So we want to cover as much space as possible. Excuse me, as much cake as possible. The reason why I'm starting to work fast is because several things what you have to think about. One, the heat, the lights that I'm under right now. Two, this is food. Food doesn't just stay up on its own. So you kind of have to hurry up so that way the buttercream can add some more support. To the young lady or young man, I'm sorry, I didn't see the name, who was saying like $500, that's crazy. I'm not saying that that, like, I didn't think your comment was rude or anything. Um, but I know it's a shocker sometimes when people see um, artists selling their art for a certain amount, especially when it's something that doesn't compete with them, like cake, like cake at $500. I know, child, let me tell you something. When I realized I could sell cake for that much money, baby. Now, let me tell you, on this live, we're, gonna, we're moving on to the second hour. This was two hours for me to do this one tier. Imagine if this was taller. Now, that's four hours of my time to do another tier, right? So that's four hours of my time, including ingredients, including shopping for my ingredients. And let me put this out there because I never plug this and I always forget to. If you are trying to or already in a cake business or an edible art business where you're doing maybe cupcakes or some sort of treats or whatever, I have a pricing ebook. You can find that in the link in my bio. Um, just go to the link in my bio and you can actually buy my pricing ebook where I teach you how to price your cakes more accurately. And once you price your cakes, you're going to be, you're going to understand the reason why it has to be that much money. If anybody's selling you, if you ever go out there and you buy a cake from an individual and they just sell it to you for $150, I just want everybody to know they're ripping themselves off. There's no cake that someone custom makes for you for $150. You wanna know why? The ingredients alone is about $30. Is about $30, the ingredients alone. That doesn't even include my labor, right? My markup. That doesn't include any of that. That doesn't include my overhead. Once you add all that up, you're going to have nothing. Nothing. For $150, there's no custom cake ever, ever for $150. That means they don't know their pricing. And I want you all to repeat after me. Do you know Jelena? That's what I want you to start saying to them. Do you know Jelena? Start saying that to them. So that in that way, they can go, who's Jelena? She sells a, she sells a pricing ebook. It sounds like you're underpricing yourself. Very much so. Trust me, I've sold cakes for $100, $100, $150, for $50, because I didn't know anything about pricing. I didn't know about all of the stuff that goes into pricing a product. Okay, you have to remember this is still a product. It doesn't matter if it's box mix cake. The, that's why I said the stuff that you wear, the, you go and buy a Nike shirt, that's, that's $90 Nike shirt, and all it was was made in a factory with little children. Like I said, that's the insane part. Trust me. This ain't made in no factory with little children, baby. This is my factory. I'm working this. So that that's the difference. And you want to know why your local grocery store can charge you $20 for a cake? It's because they're a giant corporation. They're a giant corporation. Those ingredients that they buy cost them pennies, cost them less than pennies, right? It's under a penny for the supplies that they buy. That's why. I don't have that type of hookup. Mm-mm. No. I can buy stuff wholesale, but it's not the same as these large corporations that the, their prices. Where I get my strawberries at when I do cakes is the same place you get your strawberries at. Okay? That container costs $5. It costs me $5 too. I'm not I'm not getting stuff at a at a special place wherever that grocery store is. 
All right, so you see how I'm just trying to get as much coverage as I can. You see, you can still see the cake peeking through. All I'm doing is trying to cover the cake, all right? And if you're trying to do cake and it's your first time, take your time. Remember I said, take your time. You're not gonna get it the first time. It's gonna be messy. You're gonna have buttercream all over the place. All over the place, child. Maybe next time I come on and do another cake class, I'll show you a more professional way to frost. But for now, I'm gonna start y'all off with like the easy stuff. So just go up and down, baby. Just go up and down. You're gonna be okay. It achieve it, you're gonna get the you're gonna achieve the same result. I'm gonna read comments and questions in a little bit. I just want to make sure I cover this because I don't want to just sit here and then it starts to get warm. I don't want to see any cake, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm making sure I don't see any cake at the top all the way to the bottom board that we had down here. And if you're just joining in, hi, I'm Jelena, your cake expert. What's up, your HBIC? Uh, we're doing a cake. We're frosting a six inch cake and I have a cake board in the middle and I had a six inch cake board at the bottom. And that's what we wanna make sure. You see that little hole down there? I'm gonna cover that up. We wanna make sure we don't see any of these ca this cake. Hold on. There's some crumbs on my board, which is getting on my cake. So I'm gonna kind of wipe that off. Cause I gotta save the cake from the crumbs, child. Alrighty. I think that looks pretty good, right? Look at that. Hold on, I'm gonna read questions, but I see someone who said, thank you for taking the time to teach your trade. I can't get the mine smooth. Okay, so there's several reasons why you probably can't get your buttercream smooth on your cake. I'm gonna tell you some of them. One of them, maybe the consistency of your buttercream. You wanna make sure that your buttercream consistency maintains a fluffiness of some sort. It doesn't matter what buttercream you make. It always has to maintain some sort of fluffiness. Fluffiness. It has to be smooth, right? So if you ran your spatula through it, are there lumps from the sugar? Are there lumps from the buttercream or the shortening? So you need to make sure that you're mixing it appropriately. I would suggest that you use some sort of milk-based liquid in your buttercream, okay? Um, because when you use a milk-based liquid, it keeps it shiny and it helps it keep it fluff. That's one. Two, the way you're scraping your buttercream. So I'm going to show you how to scrape buttercream, which I'm going to do right now for y'all. And then I'm going to go back and answer questions once I get this done, because I want to make sure um, y'all get to see a finished product, right? Because I don't know how TikTok works, so I don't know if they're like going to kick me off or something. So yeah. So here is my cake scraper. Okay. The straight edge. This is what you want to do. You want to put your straight edge down on your safety board, excuse me, or your turntable, right? And you see how it's like straight, like it's facing it. I don't want it to face it. I want to turn it a little bit, just a smidge. So see, it's kind of pointed a little bit more towards you. I'm going to put it up on the cake. Now, this arm is not moving. This hand is not moving. Remember that. It's going to be this hand turning the turntable, okay? So my dominant hand is holding the scraper and making sure that you see how there's no gaps. I don't see, you can't see anything behind it or anything. That's because I actually have the scraper up against it and the straight edge is down at the bottom. Always flat on the cake and on the board. That's very important because when you scrape, it can scrape crooked and we don't want a crooked cake. And now I'm going to turn with my non-dominant hand. I'm going to make sure... All this hand is supposed to do is hold this in place. Understand? And now we're going to scrape. And I'm going to keep scraping until I meet back over where I started, which I just did. And now I'm going to smoothly pull off. Do y'all see that? Remember how I said earlier with your offset spatula, if you just yanked it off the cake, off the buttercream, it would pull cake, right? Same thing for your scraper. You do not want to pull it off. Now you want to clean off the extra buttercream that came. I want to clean it off as much as I can. The reason why is whatever you leave on here is going to get back on the cake. And we don't want to keep buttercream on the cake that we're trying to scrape off. Right? So now I'm going to put it back and I'm going to go again, slowly. I'm applying a little pressure with this hand over here, with my dominant hand, just so I can make sure my scraper doesn't fall off. You're gonna start seeing my cake board down here at the bottom now. I'm scraping. You see it's getting smoother and smoother, right? 
I'm cleaning this off and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. This is the fun part. Okay, I'm really excited only because I haven't been doing cake in a while, so this is exciting me. Okay, so you see all these like gaps, right? These dents in the cake. You see that? You see that up here, right? So what you're gonna do, ooh, there's a crumb, I gotta get it. Hold on, let me grab my crumb. All right, cool. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab some clean buttercream and you're just gonna fill in those gaps. This doesn't look pretty, I'm just trying to fill it in. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm gonna go back around. So this is how you achieve a nice clean buttercream. Now let me tell you something. It takes patience because you're gonna go, again, this happens to every student I ever teach. You know, oh, it's not doing it, I can't get it, I've been standing here for too long. When I perfected my buttercream, it took me like three hours the first time. Trust me, you're not gonna get it the first time. So I'm going around and I'm trying to see any gaps in my buttercream that I may have. And the reason why you have gaps is because in that area it didn't get enough buttercream. So when it wiped off and when it leveled all the buttercream, it, you got to see now where the holes were. So now I went back. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my scraper again, right? Excuse me. I'm going to grab my scraper again and I'm going to scrape. Okay, and now we're gonna have less holes. We're gonna have less holes. I need to look. I still have some, so I need to go back. Hold on, I want to kind of mix this around a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going in. Make sure I fill in any, any gaps. You wanna also make sure the buttercream on the top, here on the top edge is higher, all right? You wanna make sure it's higher than the cake. That's important, especially if you're trying to achieve some uh, sharp edges, which again, if you're new to the cake world, sharp edges is nothing to achieve. It's not even, it's not that big of a deal. People make it a big deal. Customers don't care that much and you stress yourself out over simple stuff. But I do like sharp edges, but it's not like, again, you don't need to stress yourself. All right, see, I'm gonna clean this off. I don't wanna transfer buttercream. And now we're gonna scrape again. Oh, see that? Here's a perfect, a perfect example, you see that gap right up in here? That tells me that there's not enough buttercream right there. So I need to add more. That tells me I do not have even buttercream, okay? So now I need to go back and add buttercream in that spot. That is the fun part about this, is that it will show you where your unlevelness is, and now you can go back and fix that, right? So I'm gonna add more buttercream over here and if you want to do, I'm not doing it now because I don't want to run out of time, but um, in between your scraping, you can actually go sit your cake back in the freezer again to chill. It helps to work off a chilled cake. Remember, I told you that. I see someone giving me like little TikTok gifts. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you're just joining in, hey, what's up? I'm Jelena. You missed the majority of the class, but stay if you want to see the final result. Okay, I'm just checking, I'm just checking. All righty, let's clean this off. Let's scrape, let me see how I did, where I added the buttercream. Okay, you see here, boom, look at that. You don't see a gap anymore. So I'm gonna pull, gotta pull some of this off. See how that works? It just takes some patience and some time. You gotta do it several times over and over again until you actually get the smoothness that you're looking for, which I'm pretty happy right now. I'm really happy. And in actuality, um, the way that I do cakes now, I would leave this like this. I really don't wanna change it, y'all. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. Should I make it clean 
or should I keep it like this? Because I'm one of the people that I love when I have like a crown on my cake. I love that. So I'm going to let y'all vote on what that is. I'm going to put this back in the freezer and then I'm going to answer your questions. And then if we have enough time, I'll come back and clean it off. Okay, I got my cake in the freezer. I'm gonna clean up my area and I'm gonna answer your questions. So that way I'm up to date on what you all are thinking. And my fingers are starting to be sticky, so I gotta clean to, oh my God. I literally walked it away for like two seconds. How the hell did you guys already vote on clean? Okay, fine, fine, I will clean the top. Okay, uh, what about the bottom? Where is it getting, where it's getting thin? Okay, so the bottom half, um, you can always add more buttercream on it if you start to see through the cake and stuff like that. You can always add more buttercream. I'm pretty okay with not adding more buttercream on there. I'm like, I'm not too picky about seeing some cake through mine, but if you want to have a thicker, um, buttercream layer, you can definitely add more buttercream. Can you use foil tin pan to bake a cake? Yes, you can. You can definitely use a foil tin pan to bake a cake. It won't come out as clean as these cakes came out because tin pans tend to kind of move and bend. Is this going to be serious, a series on TikTok that we can join more often? What a great question. Maybe it will be. Maybe I will start doing more free cake classes or even more edible art classes um, for y'all to be able to join into. I would actually love that. I am just want to make sure, I don't want to miss anybody's questions because I know y'all, some of you have been sitting here for the beginning and I want to make sure I answer them all. Do you sell merch? I do not anymore. I used to sell shirts. Maybe I'll bring that back. I used to sell stickers. Maybe I'll bring that back too. Tears, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Um... It, I didn't finish, but yeah, if it has all your basics. Not sure what that to answer. I found a kit to decorate cakes for $20. Is that a good price? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you found a kit that has like all the basic stuff, yeah, $20 is, that's a good, that's a fair price. Definitely. Thank you for taking the time. To, I can't, okay. That's the question I saw earlier, right? Someone I'm always undercuts my prices, but they're only hurting themselves. Tell it. Listen, that is the truth. If you are a baker out there and you're undercutting someone else's prices just so you can get the order, you're doing yourself a disservice. Don't do that. And then also you're ruining the cake community because what happens is now customers are going to seek out people who are undercutting. And then now no one's going to make the proper amount of money. So don't do that. Exactly. And their cakes are brought in pre-baked and frozen. Tell Yes. Okay. So y'all on the conversation where I was talking about earlier where the grocery stores bring uh, or do box mix cakes too. Your time and labor has money, uh, monetary value. Your creativity has value. Exactly. Thank you for going slow enough for me to see the techniques and for using plain English, plain language. You're very much welcome. Hey, hi, hello, everybody. Preach, Jelena. Oh, hey, girl. Who's that? Uh, somebody said, preach, Jelena. I don't know if you know me because sometimes people don't ever say Jelena, but hey, do I know you? What's up, girl? I don't recognize your name here, but hey. Um, they pay $8 in a restaurant for one slice, yet if we charge five to six, <clears throat> exactly, exactly. Listen, listen, a very well put together, decorated, decorated cake, it, it doesn't matter where you go to get your ingredients. It should definitely be at least five to six dollars Yes, I, I in California they should be selling prices. They should be selling slices for like ten dollars because California is very expensive. That's what uh, that's what persons don't understand. Doing cakes are very time consuming. Oh yes, because we got to do the baking, we got to do the shopping, we got to do the cooling, we got to do the frosting, all of that stuff. People buy paintings with splash paint for hundreds of thousands. Child, please, art is art exactly. Um, I always use milk instead of water and I only use egg whites and yellow white cakes. Yeah, a lot of people like to use egg whites instead of using eggs. And Swiss meringue buttercream, you're actually using egg whites in it too. Do you have a problem with buttercream recipe in the summer months? I, I have, uh, you want to check out an American crusted buttercream. 
I said this earlier, but I'll repeat it. For anybody that is looking for a good buttercream recipe to use in the summer, use an American crusted buttercream. I actually have a recipe on my YouTube channel where I've done a video. You could check that out. How do you achieve white buttercream? Oh, I've already answered that. Okay, boom. I look, I made it back. All right, let me see. All y'all vote in for me to clean it off. Y'all just want me to do more work. Um, yeah, it has the moving thing and all the other things like the cake le leveler, the piping bags. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I fun mellows, melios. Melios, yeah, so I would definitely just go ahead and buy that. You can buy all those things separately also, um, but $20 for the basic stuff, I would get it, definitely. And then just go to your local Michaels Arts and Craft if you have one wherever you reside at, or you can just check on Amazon for an inexpensive turntable. So you definitely wanna use a turntable. Or if you have a Lazy Susan, they're also referred to as Lazy Susans, which is kind of the same thing. Um, well, not all, but like, okay, I read that one. Just going down, going down, going down. Um, hmm. Leave it. A lot of people, okay, so one person said leave it. Everybody said clean, clean, leave it. Okay, clean, clean, clean. It looks nice. Clean, 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 clean. I like it, but I want to see how it's clean. Okay, I love painting the crowns like that. I love painting the crowns too. Like you put a little dip of uh, gold extract on it. I mean, a gold extract gold petal dust on it it looks so cute all right some all right the majority of everybody is saying to clean it love the crown look but the purpose of the tutorial make it clean all right i'll definitely make it clean okay so let me leave it in there for a couple minutes because i want it to get a little bit stiff so that way i can deal with the rest of the buttercream again i'm talking fast only because i don't i told tiktok i was gonna be on for two hours and i don't know if they're gonna cut me off so i'll definitely clean it um i can't achieve my own clean edges so you do it for me <laughs> okay i'm gonna take this back to the kitchen see put everything on a tray everybody it helps and then the other thing that i have next to me is my garbage can so as i'm cleaning i'm wiping everything into my garbage can so i'm gonna go wash my hands wash the rag put this in the kitchen and i'm gonna come back and answer any questions and then we'll grab the cake and finish it off so let's do that Washed my rag, wiping down my surface. Make sure I don't have any mess anywhere. So I wanna say this first and foremost, if you missed the beginning, I'm sorry. I don't really know how TikTok works very well. I make TikToks, but I don't tend to like stay on it as often. Um, so I don't know if there's gonna like replays or I don't know if that becomes available. But if you miss any of the tips that I gave here, these tips I also have given on my YouTube channel periodically through different um, different videos. You can check that out. You can just go to uh, go to youtube.com backslash Jelena Simpson. I think that's how the link works. Um, I believe you can also find the link at the link in my bio, how to get to my YouTube channel. And on there is a bunch of cake tutorials and bunch of edible art tutorials on how you can achieve, you know, really beautiful piece of work that you can eat and my buttercream recipe that I said if you don't know who I am hi I'm Jolena Simpson what's up I'm your cake expert yeah HBIC if you are I want to say all of these things before like I forget and for anybody who is just joining them um, because I forget to always plug these things if you are a business you do not have to be a cake business you have to be a woman-owned business and you have to be at least 18 years old if you are a business you are trying to run and you're trying to learn how to grow that business, you can actually join my subscription-based service where I coach women on how to run a successful profiting business. You go to hbicsquad.com, hbicsquad.com. You can also check us out on Instagram, hbicsquad underscore, don't forget the underscore, or you can check me out on Instagram, Jelena Simpson on Instagram, and then you'll see the HBIC on there too. And that's for anybody who has an any woman 18 and older who has an idea for a business and needs the help to get it started or 
already has the idea, already started, and just want to learn how to grow it, you can definitely check me out on hbicsquad.com or hbicsquad underscore on Instagram and get all the information on how you can join. The subscription is $24.99 a month. There's also a free subscription. Um, so if anybody wants to check that out, you have to be 18 and over. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry, Gen Z. I love y'all. I do. But um, one, I cuss a lot. Two, I'm a grown woman, so I can't babysit little kids. So that's the reason why it has to be 18 and over. And three, my passion is just not art. My passion is teaching people how to grow within their businesses because a millennial like me, um, the information that I provide was not provided to me as a young person. I'm 35 years now. If I knew what I knew when I was 18 or when I went to high school, the the difference that my life could have turned out to be, but what it could have should have and you can't go back. But um, so hopefully this message will reach any woman who's struggling with that, who needs help. If you are a mom, trust me, so am I. I got two kids, child. Two Two, I run my business from home with two kids on my hip. So if you are a mom and you need that help on how to organize your business, come on, come and join the HBIC squad, girl. De we definitely looking for you. If you aren't a mom, that's fine too. That's perfectly fine, but I gear my business towards women because as a woman who started my business 15 years ago, doors were shut in my face. People weren't willing to help me. Nobody wanted to give me a time or day, especially a black woman. Um, because for some reason people don't think black women should be educated and I'm a firm believer in all black women should be educated um, because we do the hardest jobs out of anybody. That's just my stance. You don't have to believe, you don't have to agree with me or not. I'm not here for you to agree with me. Um, I'm just telling you exactly what my, what my viewpoints are. So if you are that type of woman, you can be a white woman too and you want to join this group. It's not like just for black people. Let me say that. You could be any race. I'm just saying my personal story, what I went through as a black woman, doors got closed in my face. Nobody wanted to help me out. I was asking people, please help me on how to price. How, how do I sell my stuff? I don't, I don't understand what to do. Trust me. Trust me. I don't care what race you are, baby. If you need the help, I'm going to have the answers for you. That's one hands down. Oh, look, Patty's here. That's she's one of my girls. She's part of my squad. Um, yes, man comes to join the squad. See, she's telling you how to come join the squad. Um, so yeah, so I am um, I'm a very firm believer in helping women. That's a big deal for me. A very big deal. So I just wanted to put that out there for anybody who's interested in that. Before I got into like a long spew about how to clean this cake off because now y'all making me clean the top. I was really hoping y'all would be like, Oh, no, Jelena looks great. Just leave it like that. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, all right, so let me answer questions and then I'll grab the cake. Uh, da, 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 da. Clean edges. Patty, dang it, Patty, I see you voted for clean edges too. We want the edges sharp. Oh my God. Okay, y'all don't come for me. Okay, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preference this first <laughs> before I get the cake. I don't want y'all coming for me, okay? If these edges aren't as sharp as you would like them to be. Now, mind you, I am rushing through this because like I said, I don't know if TikTok is going to cut me off. Y'all let me know if they will. Um, and also, I tend to leave my cake in the freezer for a good hour before I give it sharp edges. All right. So this cake, this buttercream is still going to be soft when I take it out. So I'm not going to get as clean as I want to. Probably not even as as much as I don't want to, it's probably not going to be that clean. But I'm going to show you the method. I'll actually even share a second method on how you can get clean buttercream edges. I can achieve my own clean edges. So, oh, I can't. I already read the question. You can stay live as long as you want. There's no timer. Okay. All right. Perfect. Because it had asked me when I make, made the event, like what time's the event and what time the event's going to end. So I was thinking, oh, maybe it's going to cut me off at like nine. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Because Instagram... um. Instagram, like they let me go on for like two hours, but then sometimes randomly, if I'm on for one hour, they'll be like, oh, we got to cut you off. I don't know. Instagram real shady sometimes. I think she said 16 years. If you're talking about HBIC squad, you got to be 18. She said she's been making cakes for 16 years. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm answering that question. Yes. I've been making cakes for 16 years. Yes. Um, oh my God. If you guys go on my Instagram, Jelena Simpson and follow me over there. I will post a throwback picture of what one of my beginner cakes look like. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. Is this what I think about it and how far I've come? Like, oh crap. Like, so I'm going to show y'all. So you know that when you try out the first time, you're not going to get it right all the time. So don't fear it. It didn't take me 16 years to get it right. But when I first started, I definitely did it. Um, Jelena, you're so bomb. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, hey, 
Lanita. That's Lanita. Hey, girl, that's another one of my HBIC squad members. Come join us in HBIC squad. Hey, Brittany, that's another HBIC squad member. Hey, girl. Uh, my girls are here. I'm, I'm so glad you ladies came to show up and show out, girl. Yes, tell them. Um, I'm getting all the... Yes, strong squad, squad. Yes, yes, yes. You can stay live as long... Okay, I already read that question. I think that's to advertise it. But if you're just live, there's no timer. Oh, okay, okay. So you guys are answering my question. I appreciate that. You don't have to rush. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> I was feeling a little bit like, oh my God, I gotta hurry up. Like I'm super like, oh my God, I, my fingers are starting to sweat because I'm like, I'm gonna take this cake out and y'all really want sharp edges and it ain't gonna be sharp, child. It's not even gonna be that cute. <sighs> what else can I show y'all while we wait for this cake? Um, ooh. So something that I always say in my HBIC squad is don't go out there buying all the like new crap that they throw in your face in the cake community or in the edible art food industry because there's always something new. But I'm going to tell you right now, everything that I use is pretty basic and under $10. The only most expensive thing that I have is this turntable. This turntable actually cost like a hundred and something dollars. This is this is an expensive turntable. It was actually um, given to me by a sponsor. The sponsor is, I mean, they're not a sponsor of this, but they had sponsored a video once. Innovative Sugarworks. If you guys go to Innovative, if you guys go to sugarworks.com, you can see they sell some cake stuff and these very expensive turntables. See, there's my sticker, my stickers that I sold. I have more stickers, different ones, but that's one of them. So I would not invest in something like that until you're uh, financially able. And what I mean by that is not the money that you have right now. I mean the money that your company is able to build uh, build for, for it. The amount of money your company is able to make. So if your your company's making money, then maybe splurge on something like this. But the other thing I would say that you I would suggest you do splurge on is a mixer, okay? Definitely want to splurge on a mixer only because when you're doing cake orders, your arm is going to hurt from using that hand mixer. If that's all you have right now and all you can afford, stick with that. I'm not saying to go out and break your neck to buy it. I'm not saying you need it. No, I'm just giving you a tip that if you are capable of purchasing a mixer, okay, go buy it purchase the most inexpensive one the in most inexpensive version because you want to first see if you're even gaining clientele because the last thing you want to do is go out here and buy all this fancy stuff and you are not even getting customers okay now you've just wasted all this money that's just going to get dusty because now you're not even baking anything because you feel bad because you're not getting customers so go buy the most inexpensive one and try that out and KitchenAids are fun anyways like you can make mashed potatoes in this like mixed mashed potatoes cakes for yourself so so many different things you could do with it. I mean, they can they have the ice cream attacher or something like that on here or the meat attacher on here. Like there's so many things that you can add on to this. So I would say that I have three mixers. I started my business with a hand mixer and then um, I got an actual KitchenAid mixer and I still own it. I still have it. And so that KitchenAid mixer with me is 16 years old. It was probably made two years before I got it. So that thing is like, a t that's an 18 year old KitchenAid mixer. And I still use it, not this one. This is my brand new baby. My brand new matte black baby right here. But I still use that old KitchenAid mixer. Um, it's important for you to utilize the things that you have in home when you start your business because the less your overhead is, the better. You don't wanna go out, like I said, buying all the things in the world. Um, I'm, I'm talking to you because I'm trying to waste time so that way I can keep my cake in the freezer as long as possible so I can clean it. So just so y'all are like, where is the cake? Love the authentic, 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 city, authentic city. I can read y'all, but for some reason I, I'm having a stroke. I don't know. Vibe here. Oh, thanks. Um, metal or acrylic cake scraper Ooh, i love the question okay let me let me tell you something let me tell you something okay let me tell you something i love my metal cake scrapers love them they have my logo on them they're perfect easy to clean easy to wipe off but my acrylic cake scrapers they are gorgeous these are my favorite favorite so this is another sticker that i have it says original cake stuff like original gangster, original cakester. Yes, I drew them myself. I'm a graphic designer. 
a trained graphic designer. And so these are some of the stickers that I used to sell. Let me know if I should sell them again. They're like cute little waterproof stickers. The other one says HBIC. And if you don't know what HBIC stands for, um, you may be too young, um, but I will let you know. It stands for Head B in Charge. And the B stands for exactly what you think it stands for. And it's not Baker. It doesn't stand for Baker. So I use both to answer that question. I use the metal ones and I use the acrylic ones. And, oh, so the ways that I'm gonna show you how to clean your buttercream, if you are um, wanting to be professional in the cake world, this is something that you can definitely think about. Or if you want to work, or if you're already in the cake world and you don't know about these, I'll show you. So they're called acrylic disc. You can find them on Amazon, but you can also find them on this company. It's called cakesafe.com. Cakesafe, S-A-F-E.com. They sell acrylic discs, all different sizes. All different sizes, all different shapes right you see that and this will help you for the person in here who said that they can't get clean edges on their buttercream for the um this is perfect for you okay so what you're going to do maybe i'll use these so i can show you how you can achieve it what you want to do is you want to have one at the bottom of your cake and then one at the very top of the cake right and then you get to scrape all that buttercream off and then that way you can um, then get sharp edges. And then I set this back in the freezer and then I'm able to pull this off without any buttercream coming off on it. So yeah, so you could definitely use these. Um, if you can't afford these, cause these are pretty expensive, you can actually use another one of these. <clears throat> another one of these, put this on top of the cake and then scrape it and you can still achieve that same thing. It's just not as fancy. And then what you do is you either throw it away, wipe it off and use it again. So yeah. Do, 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 do. I burnt through five hand mixers before I finally took the stand mixer plunge and it changed my life. Oh my gosh. I'm so first of all, I'm so sorry to hear that because I'm telling you, your arm will hurt. You will use that thing, and yeah, the engine doesn't run very good in those hand mixers. So yeah, if you because what's nice is that I can have a cake mixing and then I can be doing something else at the same time. Or I can have my buttercream mixing and I can be doing something else. So this really helps with taking your hands off. Laugh it out, it's old enough to join your group. <laughs> yeah, my KitchenAid mixer is old enough to join my group. KitchenAid mixers are timeless. Yeah, I mean, and you can actually get them, um, get maintenance on them. Um, there's companies out there that do maintenance on KitchenAid mixers, so you can look that up. I My KitchenAid mixer definitely needs maintenance. It's making this funny, funky noise that I just keep ignoring and acting like it's not making the noise, but it's definitely there, and I think the engine needs to be worked on. Oh, yes, sell them again? Okay, love the original Cakester. The Cakester one, I love it. Okay, well, maybe I'll bring it back. Are you using butter also? Yeah, so in my buttercream recipe, Lanita, um, I do put butter in the buttercream recipe. I put, um, for one, um, batch, I put, um, at least a stick or a stick and a half of butter. If it's vanilla buttercream, then I'll put like a stick or a stick and a half. It just really depends. Um, when you see my buttercream recipe on my YouTube channel, you're going to go, oh, well, what's the measurement? I've been doing this for so long. I don't even measure anymore. I go by taste and texture. Um, so if it doesn't taste right, this is something I'm sure everybody's grandmother does. If it doesn't taste right, then obviously I need to add a little bit more of something. If the texture isn't right, obviously I need, I need to mix it a little bit more. So yeah, I go by taste and texture. So it just depends on when I taste it. I'm like, mm, isn't what I want it to be. Yeah, so that's, so yeah, I do use butter. I use unsalted butter, always unsalted butter. When I use whipping cream and sugar, it never turns frosting tips, please. When I use whipping cream, and sugar it never oh okay so if you if you're trying to get like some sort of frosting tips and you want a pipe out of a piping bag yeah whipping cream's not going to do that for you babes you got to make a buttercream whipping cream is like light airy and that's made of god's like eyelashes it's too soft it's too soft it's a cloud that's not going to work you need to make a buttercream and my thing is you want to make an american crusted buttercream and 
there's different textures for a buttercream. So you can do like something really soft, which means that um, you put more liquid in it and it made it a little bit more soft and runny. Or you can put less liquid and it'll make it thicker. So when you do piping and you want tips, you're gonna have more powdered sugar in it and less liquid. Um, so yeah, but again, you wanna play around with your recipe um, just so you can see. And I always just add a smidge at a time. I don't like go, oh, one cup of this, no. Add a smidge of powdered sugar, add a smidge of liquid in it. And so you get to see the texture and if it's the texture you want, then it's perfect. The way that you know that you're gonna get tips on your buttercream is if you, y'all ever seen the buttercream test? When they hold the buttercream upside, the, the Swiss meringue test, when they hold the buttercream upside down, oh, well, powdered sugar is like going everywhere. Same thing with this. You see, it's stiff. It's stiff. <laughs> so yeah, so you wanna test it. I wouldn't recommend right away putting your bowl upside down, but just see if you got some peaks run your spatula through it, right? And if it stays in place, then it has some peaks to it. Um, no, I didn't know you were supposed to. I thought it was just those two. Yeah, so buttercream has to have butter, shortening, powdered sugar, your choice of liquid, and then obviously some sort of flavor. And if you choose, you can sprinkle some salt in there to cut the sweetness. I have two KitchenAids and yes, they are life-saving and, and time-saving, yes. Time is money, I'm all about saving time. Ooh, this thing literally just like jumps up. I got mine 20 years ago, it's still amazing. Oh my God, yes, they are, they last so long. I bought a KitchenAid last year, love it, wish I had bought one sooner. I feel you on that, babe. Which type of meringue will be best for decorating cakes? I don't make meringue. Um, I know some of my HBIC members, if you're still in here, if you make a Swiss meringue, um, I didn't know there was different types of meringues. If there is, let me know, because I don't make Swiss meringue buttercream. The reasons why I don't make Swiss meringue buttercream is because under Food Cottage Law, they don't want you to use Swiss meringue buttercream. Um, and that's because it has egg whites in it, and it's non-cooked eggs, and they don't want you to sell anything that's not cooked or is a danger to someone's body, like uncooked eggs. So yeah, so I don't know much about meringue. How do you make coral color, please? Um, I go to the store. <laughs> I go to the store and I go to the color section, the cake supply store, or on Amazon. And I'm like, oh look, coral. <laughs> And that's how I make coral. <laughs> um, if you just have like your basic colors, red, green, blue, yellow, you can make coral by adding a very, 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 very smidge of red and a very tiny, tiny, tiny smidge of yellow, right? So you're gonna get an orange consist, an orange color, but you wanna add a smidge because you want it to be a soft orange color. So it kind of looks like a peach. And then that's close enough to coral. And then if you add a small amount of pink, like a very tiny little pink, that's coral. Because coral is actually orange with a little bit of pink. So, but I just go to the store and it's already made. See, I don't have to, I don't have to do all that measuring of what colors. If you do less liquid and buttercream, does it stay too grainy? No, no. So it just depends on the measurement of liquid you're doing. So when I say less, what I'm saying is if you have a basic recipe you follow, right? And that basic recipe you follow is not um, giving you the stiff peaks that you're looking for. So then you wanna probably cut down on the liquid that you're adding so that way it can stay a little bit thicker. But when you mix it, the powdered sugar is gonna dissolve no matter how much liquid you put on it. It's gonna dissolve. So you just wanna keep doing that. And I play around with mine when I'm looking for stiffer peaks. So I'll add powdered sugar and then I'll add a little bit liquid. I'll add powdered sugar and add a little bit liquid. If it's too runny, I'll add a smidge more powdered sugar to thicken it up a little bit, right? So you just kinda of play around with it. But powdered sugar will always dissolve. You just gotta keep mixing. How did you choose your career? Hmm. What a great question. Really, my career chose me. I actually just wanted to be an entrepreneur and invest in somebody to run a business, and I was just gonna run the business side of it. 
and they were gonna be like the person who did all the cakes and everything and that was my sister I went to my sister Jalisa and I said hey you could be the baker because she loves to bake and I'll be the business person but she was in high school at the time and she was about to go to college so she had to really focus on that and so I got stuck with the business and I just kept going and that was 16 years ago and I haven't I, I mean I just stopped in January but like I just kept going so that's how I got into it I actually went to school for photography and graphic design yeah and now I, and and I and I was a baker for 15 years and then um within that same year I was able to develop a program for women to help them with their business so that's pretty much the quick part of the story how do you make a core I already read that one I do the same with my buttercream I just go buy it and looks and tastes right I just go buy the looks and the taste yeah you can actually buy pre-made buttercream if you want to there's nothing wrong with that either wilton sells buttercream people sell buttercream on amazon cake supply stores sell buttercream cake supply stores even sell pre-made um cake mix so that of different flavors or just a base and you can doctor that up you definitely want to check on check on those like because when you're running a business you want to think about the time if you don't have if you got, you know, other commitments, a nine to five job, a family to raise, you need to think about the time you spend and you got to be able to cut that time. And that and if you're spending all that time and going, oh, look at me, I'm Susie Homemaker, hand whipping together my buttercream and, you know, I just got all the time in the world. No, that's not reality. Reality is I got 10 orders and I need to hurry up. Right. So where you can cut time at is by looking at some pre-made things um of wherever you feel comfortable to purchase pre-made right like they have pre-made fillings so you don't have to make the filling from scratch i mean if they're using the same ingredients i'm using and it tastes the same it's better for me to just buy it from you than me do it myself because it's going to take me an hour to make my filling and then i can make my cake and then i gotta do all this other stuff so i try to like cut a lot of time Okay, so yeah, Lanita says Swiss meringue. Um, I'm calling her Lanita, but her her name is Caked Up Nini. Swiss meringue is my go-to. I use pasteurized egg whites for mine. Oh, if you guys want some cake supplies, go to Caked Up Nini. She has an actual online shop where she sells cake supplies. So check her out. You definitely want to check her out. She just opened up her shop recently, I think at the beginning of this year. And yeah, she sells really cute cake supplies for um, bakers. And if you're interested in that, check her out. Um, what is your sister doing now? My sister is, um, well, if you follow HBIC Squad on Instagram, HBIC Squad underscore on Instagram, you will see her. She's actually a part of it. Um, we do Sunday service every Friday at seven o'clock in the evening not every every other friday um sunday service is a cooking show that we created where we will cook together or she'll have a guest it's her show or she'll have a guest on to cook with um yeah oh i mean that's not all she does like she's a homemaker she has children she's a mom she's going to she went back to school to become a nurse so yeah she i mean she still bakes but she doesn't like do it for money she doesn't do cakes like she does like she likes to do like banana bread pineapple upside down cake you know what i mean like southern food southern styled you know baking so that's really more her forte so she still does it i'm jelena simpson on instagram and she's jaleesa simpson on instagram so you guys can find her there where our names are spelled exactly the same it's just she has an s and i have an n and no we're not twins <laughs> And if you see her on Instagram and you're like, who's this white girl? This can't be Jelena's sister. That's my sister. My actual sister. We have the same mom and the same dad. That is my sister. Um, what brand of butter do you use? I'm in California. I use, uh, let's see if I have any butter left over. Let me check. And I'm going to check on my cake. Hold on. So the brand of butter I have on my refrigerator right now is the Lando Lakes buttercream, buttercream, butter. But I typically go for any butter that may be on sale um, because sometimes the butters cost like, could be anywhere from like $6. And that's expensive because when I started out in the cake world, these were like $2, right? These were like $2 and now they get expensive. So I use Lando Lakes. Um, they sell this nationwide. 
um yeah i know the logo changed on them right you know about that but i also always just grab which one whichever one is the most inexpensive one and you want to get the unsalted oh this one's the butter salted one but we use this for cooking something um but you want to get the unsalted one so that way you can control the salt in your food i checked the cake it's a little bit chilled so i'm gonna go grab it are you a pisces no ma'am or no sir i am a uh i am a capricorn birthday is january 7th if anybody wants to wish me happy birthday january 7th please do so my birthday is january i'm a capricorn how do you make oh i already read that i don't know why i keep coming across that same question i do the same with my buttercream i just okay i got that oh i must have scrolled up i've never used shortening in my buttercream can you explain to me how it makes a difference okay very good question so shortening is actually what makes an american crusted buttercream it actually will um make your buttercream last longer not on i'm not talking about on the cake yes on the cake but it will last longer like i can use this buttercream a month from now if i contain it correctly in a container and wrap it up i can use it a month from now it makes it last a lot more longer you could put it in the freezer take it out let it defrost or whatever if that, that's how you like to store your stuff um, so if you're just using, if you're just making buttercream straight from butter, your buttercream, that means we got to eat it that day, right then and there. Ain't no shelf life, baby. I got to eat this now because tomorrow that butter is going to start tasting different. It's going to start tasting a little bit sour. And then the third day it's going to be like, mm. and then it's going to taste. And then in a week it's going to be like, mm, 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 mm. So the shortening actually preserves the flavor. It actually saves it from dying too quickly. And also it gives it a crusted outside layer. So when you're frosting cakes or frosting cupcakes, it's stiff. It is stiff. It will hold itself so that way it doesn't fall apart. Um, if you're just using butter, mm, that shit's just gonna fall right off. Just, if any amount of heat hits it for maybe two minutes, it's just gonna fall right off, right off. Pick up a cupcake that is going to slide right off because it's butter. Butter melts. Shortening only melts with high, high heat. High, it has to be very, very, very hot for shortening to melt because shortening is basically just fat, which for y'all who are like, oh, that's gross. That's in everything. Everything you eat, er meat, cans of food, whatever you're getting at the grocery store, it has some sort of fat in it. Fat brings flavor. There ain't nothing wrong with fat. I'm, I'm. I was born in Jersey, raised in Florida, and in South Kakalaki. Don't try Southerners. We love our fat. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer the tilt? Why does it do this? It Y'all be asking questions. Quit. It literally just like the question I was reading, it's gone. It went away. I'm going to try to find this question. Oh, there it goes. I'm going to find, I'm going to read this question and I'm going to go get my cake. A uh, choice of liquid, milk. I I prefer to use milk, a milk-based liquid. So I can use um, a, some sort of creamer, like a coffee creamer. Coffee creamer is excellent to put in your cakes and in your buttercream. It adds as extra flavor. Or I can use milk, coconut milk, um, almond milk. So, or, you know, I like a milk-based liquid because it keeps, um, one, it very tasty, two, a much more fluffier and shinier. Do you prefer the tilt head bowl lift? I don't like the bowl lift. Oh, this thing here? You're talking about this, how it how it lifts up? Um, I don't really have a preference. I don't have a preference. Cause I have one that doesn't have that and then I have one, and then I have two that have it. And I, either one is fine with me. Um, I use a high ratio shortening during the summer months. Yes, it's very, very important that um, I mean, your inside buttercream, like the layers that I frosted, that can just be straight buttercream. I mean, excuse me, straight butter. You know what I mean? Like the person who said that they make buttercream just from butter, that inside layer, but the outside layer, I would always suggest some sort of shortening based buttercream so that way it holds its texture, right? Maybe one day what I'll do is I'll come on and make you buttercream. And if, you know, I mean, it's on my YouTube channel, but I can come on and show you guys how I make buttercream. Also, I love covering cakes with ganache. So maybe we'll get in that one day too. Uh, I, I was anti-shortening, but you done converted me. <laughs> I'm glad I brought you over. Cro thank you for crossing over. 
Um, I know a lot of people are like not shortening because they don't like that flavor and the taste, but I use a very good quality vanilla extract. I use a very expensive vanilla extract, which the taste of that vanilla extract is so delicious and soothing, you don't even taste the shortening. So that, oh, that's the other thing. Somebody had asked an hour ago, what, um, how can they keep their buttercream white? And I said, the what makes it yellow is when you use butter to use a white base butter and not a yellow base butter. But the other thing is, is when you put in vanilla extract, that is a brown or cream color extract, you can actually find vanilla extract that is clear. And that's an imitation extract, which, you know, nothing's wrong with that either. Imitation extract, you know, it's fine. Um, so use clear extract so that way you can keep it white. Yes, Capricorn, me too. Okay, yay to the Capricorns. Do you have kids? I got two. I got two children. A six-year-old and a four-year-old. Capricorn here, January 10th. Oh, look at my Capricorn people. You're so pretty. You're. I'm pretty sure you are just as beautiful. I, I bet you my bottom dollar, you are just as beautiful. My birthday is January 30th. Right, but you're not a Capricorn, are you? But that's okay. I still love you because you're in January. Happy, happy belated birthday. My dad is January 8th. Oh, look at us. Oh my gosh, I get four sticks for less than $3. You get four sticks for less than $3. Yeah, sometimes it just depends, especially after COVID, everything kind of raised, all the prices kind of raised up. The cost of vanilla extract now is like $30, $40. Yeah, stuff be responsible. But four sticks for $3, that's pretty good. Yes, ma'am, that logo did indeed change. What are we talking about? Are you talking about my original logo? Is that what you're referring to? Because my business used to be called Yes Ma'am. Is that what you're talking about? Like, did you just did you just like Google me or something? <laughs> Is that what just happened? Hi, I like to bake cakes, not a pro, but if it makes me my family happy, I'm happy. Listen, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm from Chicago. Hey, Chicago. I just made a Marciano cherry cake this morning. Mmm. I bet that tastes really good. Oh my God, I'm a nurse, good for her. I know, I'm really excited for her. I'm really excited. I buy pre-made fillings pretty often. Yeah, it's much more easier. Oh my God, I'm never going to catch up on any of these things. So I'm gonna tell you this, I love everybody here. I'm not trying to ignore you, but I'm gonna go grab the cake. Oh, oh, I'm almost done, okay. Oh my God, you're motivating me to push my, my, bis, my bus to get off the ground. Oh, your butt to get off the ground? Yes, let's go. What do you think about cake mix? I love it. I'm. That's what I like to use. Betty Crocker, preferably. Pillsbury Doughboy. Mm. And, and Duck and Hunt. Okay, Pillsbury Doughboy. It's okay. I don't like to get them. But I don't like. I don't like to buy that one. That one's a little bit more expensive. Um, Betty Crocker is my go-to one because she's more inexpensive. Duncan Hines is about the same price, but something's wrong with Duncan Hines. I don't know what it is. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but Duncan Hines always overflows out of my pants. And the way that the cake is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If anybody uses Duncan Hines, you know, more power to you. But for me, it's, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's not giving me what I need. You know what I mean? It's just not working. I'm going to go grab the cake. I'll be back. Y'all can't hear it. She's solid, y'all. She's solid. All right. So let me grab this because now, okay. Hold on, let me see if I got the other ones. One second. Let me see. Gonna open my little toolkit. I don't know if it's in here. I'm looking for a razor and I don't think I have it because I think I threw them all the way. Yeah, I think I threw them all the way. Now you can use a knife for this moment. I'm going to use an X-Acto blade. Okay, my cake is frozen. 
Well, not my cake, my buttercream is frozen. I can pretty much, I pretty much bet my cake's not frozen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, you can do two things. You can add buttercream on top of here and level it out if you like, right? Or you can um, actually um, cut all of this off, which is what we're gonna do right now, all right? So you're gonna need some sort of blade. I normally use a bigger blade, but I'm gonna actually use this um, smaller one, this X-Acto knife, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and find the top of my cake. Yeah, see, it's not as frozen because I was able to push that in there really easy. And then I'm gonna go ahead again. Remember, do not, the code south of the, <laughs> the code switch, uh, do not uh, move your dominant hand, remember that. Don't move your dominant hand. And it's the left hand that's gonna turn the turntable, okay? So I'm actually going to just nicely turn slowly, okay, hold on. Turn slowly, all right? And then I'm gonna lift up what I just cut off. So yeah, okay, so let's keep doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my blade and I'm just gonna go around. I'm not moving my dominant hand. I need to make sure I keep it nice and stiff. That's what she said. And then we're gonna keep turning all right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pick these pieces up. See, they're all nice and hard. Pick them up. So you see how it has like a little bit of cleanness. It's not perfect, but trust me, we're gonna go back and fix it. I just needed to get off all the high peaks from the crown. Oh look, I even pulled, I even dug too deep, but that's okay, we're gonna clean that up. I'm gonna clean off my blade Clean off my area if I made a mess, which I kind of did a little bit. Alrighty. So now you want to clean off your spatula, right? You don't need all of this extra buttercream. This this was a game changer to learn to clean your tools before you use it. I don't I don't care if I've already been using it on it. I gotta clean it because I get buttercream all on my fingers, and then I'm trying to make something. So you see how I kind of pretty much got a little bit flat. So I'm actually going here and actually add some buttercream on top. And we're gonna clean this up. I'm just adding buttercream to the top so I can get it nice and leveled. What I should have done before I put it in the freezer the first time is level it out then and then put it in the freezer and then come back and cut it. But that's okay. Jelena loves to work harder. I don't mean to refer to myself in third person. That was disgusting, I'm sorry. Okay. Remember how I showed y'all how to frost? For anybody coming in who, here new, hello, I'm Jelena. What's up? Okay, so we're gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna make sure I level it out. I can tell I can tell this part is higher. You guys can probably see that because if you've seen buttercream back here, then you can tell that it's higher. I'm gonna plop some buttercream on there, go back. Clean off buttercream, I mean spatula. I'm going back and forth. I wanna make sure it's nice and leveled. There we go. get my scraper. I'm gonna grab my other scraper. That one's clean. Grab my scraper and just clean that off, all this extra buttercream. And I wanna hurry up because I don't want my cake to defrost from the time that I had put it in the, in the freezer. 
I'm gonna clean this off again, the edges, clean off the back, you wanna clean off. Remember what I said earlier, anything you leave on any spatula or anything that's about to touch the cake is just putting back on the cake and we don't wanna do that. Oh, that's not smooth over there. There we go, that's a little bit, a little bit better. That's fine. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, we wanna just be very gentle. Can y'all see how this one's more, this side's more up? Now, there's several ways to do this. People do it different ways. This is just one of them because I've learned to figure out how to get myself out of the mess I put myself in like I said earlier, I could have done it a different way that would have been easier, which is just putting this on top and then scraping. And then I could put this back in the freezer and then peel this off and then it would be nice and clean. So that you can always do it that way. But because I didn't start it that way, I'm just gonna have to deal with what I have. Getting better. Getting better. Y'all see that focus? Again, clean. You see how I'm cleaning it every time in between each wipe? Listen, I know some of y'all be lazy and y'all be like, oh, what does it matter? It does. Because if I didn't clean it, then the buttercream on here is just gonna go back and I'm gonna have to fix it again. And I don't wanna have to do all that. I don't wanna have to do all that. I'm gonna swipe a little bit so I can clean off the sides. Achieving sharp edges takes time. It takes time. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. That's why I was trying to get out of it. All right, so I got it down. People also, another way that people do it is they like to put their, have like boiling water next to them. Uh, well, hot boiling water next to them and then dip their scraper in it so it's hot and then they swipe and then what happens is, so you guys can kind of see some of these like little air bubbles and stuff like that in there. Um, I'm not too worried because if this is not covered by fondant, then it doesn't matter as much. But if they're trying to achieve a much more smoother, clean look, you can actually dip this in hot water and scrape. And then that way, um, the hot water is actually going to make it even more smoother. Ooh, 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 nope, don't scrape it again. See how it's just getting flatter and flatter and cleaner and cleaner. Now what I really want to do is I really want to put this back in the freezer. So then I can come back and really clean up the rest of these edges. But I don't think I'm going to do that uh, here live because it's already 923. And a girl tired, child. I got an early morning. But maybe I'll go back and make like a TikTok on it and then that way you guys can see me actually finish it. Ooh, I just stuck my arm in the cake. So it just keeps getting cleaner and cleaner. My issue is like this side. So I definitely need to go back, put her in the freezer for one more round, revisit her. Let me tell you about humidity. 
Humidity is when you take something out of the freezer and it sits there for quite some time. It could just be a few minutes. And it starts to get moist on the outside, kind of like a cup with, that has ice in it. Like oh, if you pour ice and water in a cup, on the outside it's gonna get a little wet and moist. That's humidity. That's what happens when you take a cake out of the freezer. So I'm getting humidity on the top. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do with that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is if your cake is starting to have humidity, you can pop it back in the freezer if you are not done. But say you're done and your cake is starting to sweat, put it in the fridge. This is the difference between a freezer and a fridge. A freezer will do just that. It will freeze whatever you have. But if you take it out, it will defrost. And that comes with moisture, liquid, water, right? And you don't want that all over your cake because that can ruin it. The refrigerator will actually dry that out. It's not gonna dry your cake, it's gonna dry all of that moisture on the outside, right? Because your cake is going to stay nice and moist as long as there's a barrier on the outside that's protecting it. And if this is covered by fondant and you get sweat on your fondant, you will be able to put that in the fridge and it will dry that out so that way all of that moisture is not all on, on the outside of your cake again. Whatever you do, do not make the mistakes I made where you go and grab a paper towel and try to wipe off the liquid. Now all you're gonna have on your fondant is these streaks that you've wiped off, which doesn't look cute and appetizing. And two, you don't wanna wipe it on your buttercream because now you're gonna be pulling buttercream off, right? So utilize your freezer when you need to freeze something. Utilize your fridge when you need to dry it out. If you leave a cake with no buttercream on it in the fridge, it will dry out within two to three days. Like completely be dry. You're going to take it out and it's going to be rock hard. It's going to be disgusting. It's not even taste good. That's why when you go into bakeries and you see them cut slices and then on the cut slices, they actually put parchment paper. That's so that way, that's, that is because they don't want the cake to dry because it's sitting in a fridge. All right. So that's just a little tip. These are not the sharp edges I wanted to get, but I have no right to be picky as I'm actually just going to come back and create a TikTok to create more finer sharp edges. Because what I'm gonna do, because I have to actually put this back in the freezer. See, it's a process, everybody, it's a process. I'm gonna put this on top. Mm, 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 mm. I should have probably put a piece of parchment on top of it, but it is what it is now. We here. I can tell, so you can see how like, there's a little bit of a lip right there. That's because it's telling me that I need to add more buttercream. See what y'all made me do? Y'all like, oh, Delino, make it straight. Like we wanna see clean edges. Okay, well, your girl gonna have to go back. And do a lot more. I was just trying to show y'all basics, but y'all all like ready for the professional stuff. And I just really need y'all to figure out how y'all can layer your cakes first. So you see how, oops, you see how I'm putting buttercream and I just put the acrylic. I put one of these on top. You tend to want to put one of these on top and at bottom so you can make it even. I'm not going to go through all that right now. So I'm just going to go and add the buttercream. all around the edge where it looks like it needs it. And then we're gonna do a scrape off. And then I'm gonna set this in the freezer and then I will peel it off. And then I will have nice clean edges. But like I said, I'm gonna make a TikTok so that way you guys can see that. I'm gonna do a little scrapey scrape scrape. And like I said, you don't need an acrylic to do this, an acrylic disc. You can just use a regular round cake pan. Nope, that's not what I meant. You can just use a regular round cake board. The cake board, you can do the same thing. See, this, now I gotta add more buttercream. So you see how it makes it nice and clean? Like it makes it perfect. Like you see that? Yeah. 
These save a lot of time. This side looks higher. I don't like that. That side's a little bit high. And that just means because this side is higher that I needed to add more buttercream on this side, but that's okay. I'm not gonna trip. I'm not gonna get into it. And if that's something that you wanna go back and fix, you can definitely go back, add more buttercream on this side, put the acrylic back on and redo this whole situation all over again. All right, so yeah, so this is gonna be my project for the next TikTok where I'll show you how to even out the rest of the buttercream on the sides here and make this less lopsided. The top is a little lopsided. But yeah, I have to put this back in the freezer for it to chill and that's gonna be another 30 minutes. So this is where I leave y'all. I'm sad, but I had fun. Okay, I'm just gonna move that over there, don't fall over. I'm sad, but I had fun. I appreciate everybody here. I I will try to go back and look at, let's see, let's see. Make strawberry cake this weekend, decorating it correctly next Saturday. Thanks for the tips. You're very much welcome. I hope this was helpful. I mean, making the, making the calm. That's why you get $500 for cake. This is time and skill both have. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you guys for the gifts. I appreciate that. It looks really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can you tell us the name of the site for the turntable again, please? It is um, sugarworks.com. Sugarworks, W-O-R-K-S.com. You can also look up Innovative Sugarworks, um, but that's not their website. Innovative Sugarworks is the name of the company, but you can go to sugarworks.com. Uh, the, uh, the side pieces are giving me anxiety. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Uh, bestie, my birthday is in three days. Hey, happy birthday. What color are we making? We're not making no color. It's going to be white for right now. Um, that's what he said. <laughs> is Sis J taking us to UK? I tend to do that. I tend to change up my voices sometimes. And if you get me and my sister in the room together, we will do that together for hours. It's just a habit of ours. We just love talking in different voices and different sounds. Not a fan of Duncan Hines either. I prefer Betty Crocker. Yeah, see, something's wrong with that. Something's a little off with Duncan. I'm not sure what's wrong with I mean, Betty Crocker just sounds like it was made by a woman for women for all over. Duncan Hines, I'm not too sure what happened over there with them. What did they do? Duncan, I messed up. Duncan Hines changed some of their recipes. Ah, but I mean... I've been having issues with them for years. So I don't think they're going in the right direction. Do you like the wask recipe? I don't know what that is. What's wask? Is that something new? W-A-S-K? W-A-S-C? Okay, so the Lando Lake butter will give me the white buttercream, correct? No. Lando Lake buttercream is, is tinted yellow. So you want to find white butter. They have white butter out there. So you want to find white butter. In this buttercream that I use, I didn't even add butter. So that's why it's super white because the shortening is white. But they do have white butter out there. Or you can also add less butter. So that way you're not getting it too tinted yellow. Less butter and more shortening. The shortening is a great tip I have. I had been looking for something to stabilize my buttercream frosting. You're welcome. Til okay, I've already answered that question. I'm going to scroll down. I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody's questions. I apologize. The patience of a god. Give me some... <laughs> Yeah, you have to have patience when you do this. Uh, the cake and decorations next week. Oh, listen, y'all trying to get me on here on a weekly basis? Okay, listen, I don't know. I may have to, I, I gotta think. Listen, that's one more thing. I do lives on Instagram. I tend to do lives on YouTube. Come on, I mean, I love my TikTok family. I love y'all. So maybe, maybe I'm gonna put y'all in the schedule. Since you all turned out for me tonight and showed out, I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. This was my first live and I was super nervous and super excited all at once. That's why I talk really fast because I'm like, I get really excited about these things. So I really appreciate it. And I would love to actually make this a regular thing where I come on and give you all the tips in the world on how to achieve great cakes. And maybe one day I'll even come 
on and sculpt some cakes because that's really where the fun is for me. Sculpting and painting are my ultimate favorite things to do with cake. So maybe we'll do that one day too. Uh, but yeah, I will definitely check, uh, look into like making this more of a regular thing for you all, especially for those who really want to get into cake decorating and really need the help and can't pay to take classes. That's why I have the YouTube channel. So that way you guys can all the free advice over there. So if you go to my YouTube channel, it's Jelena Simpson um, or my Instagram, Jelena Simpson or the other Instagram, HYC squad underscore, or here on TikTok. I'm definitely going to give you guys all the cake and baking tips um, to help you succeed. Definitely. Condensation, girl. Yes, the condensation. That's what I was referring to. When I said sweat, that's what I was referring to. It's called condensation, bestie. I know I know what it's called. Y'all don't have to tell. Y'all do not have to tell me that it's called condensation. I definitely know it's called condensation. But for some people who are learning how to do cakes, don't understand what condensation is. So I'm painting the picture. When you put ice and water in a cup on the outside of the cup, it is moist. I understand the technical term. I appreciate y'all, you know, checking me, but sometimes you gotta do a little bit of a breakdown for people who don't know what that is. But I love y'all anyways, so I, I thank you. Any suggestions for edible images? Sometimes I get air bubbles after placing them on cake. I tend to, I have only used edible images sometimes. Um, you want to get icing sheets. I think it's best if you did an edible image on top of fondant. It will be a lot more smoother. Um, and then also, if you're about to give a cake to somebody, put the edible image on at the last possible second so that way it lasts longer. Because when you put the edible image on like the night before and give them the cake, what happens is, is that's when the bubbles come and all that air gets in there, that moisture gets to it. Because you got to remember, an edible image is just, it's, it's paper that they made edible, but it still has the same situation as paper. You sit paper on something wet, it's still going to do that same thing. It's going to start dissolving. So the moment uh, edible paper touch anything with moisture in it, it will start to dissolve. So that's why you have those issues. So put it on at the last possible minute or only put it on your fondant because it will last even longer on fondant. Um, place them on a thin layer of fondant. Then, oh, somebody was saying the same thing I said. Yes. Yes, Brittany, tell them, girl. Um, thanks for all the tips. No, thank you. I appreciate y'all. I love you. I want you all to have a great night and I will see you in the next free cake class that I do. I don't know next week. I don't want to say next week and then I'm not here next week, but I will see y'all on the next free cake class. I love y'all. Bye. Thanks so much. Oh, <laughs> I'm just seeing some Q and A's that you guys had here. Okay. Bye. <laughs> thank you so much. You're godsend. Oh no, thank you. I appreciate it. Especially people of color. Oh, I think, thank you for saying that. I appreciate, I, I really super, super, super appreciate that. Thank you. I love y'all. Have a great night. How the hell do I turn this off? <laughs> I don't know where the end button is. There's like something that looks like a power button. I don't know if that's the button. There's no like end here. So I'm just going to keep clicking buttons until I figure it out. I'll talk to y'all later.